Some of you are going to walk, walk away from this with careers. Some of you, not so much. Here we go. Oh. Oh. You like that? No one likes it when you're yelling in people's faces. These people are mostly idiots. And I'm in it to win it. To me, Fish Tank Live is genuinely one of the most interesting things that have happened on the internet in a long time. It's a show that prioritizes entertainment and satire, instead of morally grandstanding opinions for a quick buck. The first season, which occurred in spring of 2023, was a massive success. This led to a second season, which continued the streak in a more unique way. This is the continued insanity of Fish Tank Live. This section will be for those of you who didn't see my first documentary of season 1, which will be linked below. Fish Tank Live is an internet show created by Jet Neptune and Sam Hyde. Sam is a renowned comedian who formed the group Million Dollar Extreme back in 2007. He would soon grow in popularity around the early to mid-2010s, interrupting various events to troll them, making comedy skits on YouTube, and eventually creating an adult swim show in 2016. However, world peace didn't last more than one season, as infighting with an adult swim and negative media attention due to the edgier parts of the show led Sam to get blacklisted from Hollywood. For many years afterwards, he fell into obscurity, only re-emerging in 2022 due to a documentary iDubbbz released about him. iDubbbz meant for this to showcase how much Sam had fallen off, but it instead did the opposite. The two would eventually become enemies of each other, resulting in a drama that further tarnished iDubbbz. Jet Neptune began working with Sam in MDE in 2019, although it was previously known for creating the shock site World Corp Enterprises when he was just 16 years old. Jet mainly does editing work for the crew, though began planning out a 24-7 livestream reality show going into 2023. The show, originally called Hell House, would come to be known as Fish Tank Live. In it, eight contestants would stay in a house for six weeks, each getting eliminated one by one. The last one standing would get a cash prize, though contestants would compete in challenges to win additional money. The season one contestants would include Vance, a normal, chill dude with an affinity for playing the drums, Damiel, the aggressive plant of the house who apparently worked on the nutshack, Sylvia, the goth girl who got made fun of for her weight, Simmons, the creepy Chinese guy who got kicked out first, Letty, the villain of the show with a gross scat fetish, John, the autistic red-pilled Andrew Tate fan with a speech impediment, Morrow, who didn't really do much and left like a bitch twice, and Josie, the fan favorite who had a habit of stimming and collecting stuffed animals. A big part of the show was its interactive elements, allowing those watching from home to affect the outcome. You could pay to send text-to-speech messages, play sound effects, and even activate fish toys. Here's a quick overview of what happened in Season 1. Josie became an immediate fan favorite due to her stimming, though so did John as he'd say the stupidest shit. Him and Simmons would get weirdly close, though that didn't last as it turns out the latter is a creepy fuck. Fans found various books he had written, which have some very pedophilic stuff in them. This resulted in Sam, here named Jason Goldstriker, to kick him out in the most embarrassing way possible. Make sure he makes it to the nearest bus stop. Oh no, right Shut the fuck up! Mara will leave the same night due to growing discomfort. John would go nuts and leave due to not actively participating in challenges. Then freeloaders are brought in, which are contestants that can't win the grand prize, but can still compete in challenges for money. The first of these was Simon, and a doppelganger of Vance named Lance. Tension between Sylvia and Letty would grow during the camping challenge, leading to the latter facing the wrath of Daniel. After he left, Chris came in. Chris, aka Airsoft Fatty, really brought energy into the show. His presence was then followed in by Frank Hassel, who destroyed a lot of people's stuff. Josie would become more extroverted during the latter half of the show, even taking charge during the Gang War Challenge. Sylvia would be eliminated by Day 31, though not before her and Letty made up. Her doppelganger, Betty, would cause further havoc on the show alongside the returning Morrow. He'd pick fights of Chris, but couldn't handle the hate and left when Frank Hassel returned. Brandon Buckingham would bring over a Lady of the Night for Chris, which didn't work out as he smelled like shit. John would soon return, but left when Luddy put his Bible in the washing machine and broke it. He tried breaking her passport, which majorly pissed off Sam. Why would you let me break your passport, motherfucker? 
Vance would soon be eliminated, leading to Letty and Josie being the final two contestants. They were stuck in a room for four days competing in many challenges. Josie won, though Sam gave a massive rant insinuating she wouldn't be getting her money. She gets no fish bucks, no money, nothing! Good day, sir! You lose! Goodbye! Out! This was actually a brilliant parody of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and the show ended on a happy ending. The first season was a massive success with it making over a million dollars on a budget estimated to be around a quarter of that amount. Its coverage and spread by many clip channels led to many becoming aware of the show, leading to Jet wanting to do a second season. Hyping up its release in late 2023, he released edited versions of Season 1 to the website, uploading them to YouTube censored. Much of the info about Season 2 was kept secret, besides it being Christmas themed and 1970s themed. We didn't even know the full cast until the day of, with the leaked cast list being only partially accurate, but on December 18th, 2023, we finally got to see what Jet had in store for us. At 2.30pm, the first new fish walks through the house. This is Shinji, and many watch as he traverses a new place. It's honestly incredible looking, Nick did a terrific job. Anyways, more fish eventually join Shinji, that being Trisha, then Summer, then Taylee, and then TJ. They mostly just chat in the kitchen as Jet tests out the TTS. Yeah, me too, dude. It's down there, like, I'm open still. Who's hungry? Yum yum. <laughs> TJ makes his presence known by moving erratically, which becomes annoying fast. By 6.50, Cole enters the tank. He looks quite a bit different from the photo, but that was likely just a gag from Jet. He begins snooping around almost immediately, searching cabinets with a flashlight and scouting for clues. Following him around is Vance, who now works with the MDE crew alongside Josie. Ben then orders everyone to the living room, in order to meet the 7th contestant, JC. It was announced that the crew had gotten them all clothes to match with the 70s theme. The other contestants arrived much later, supposedly due to harsh weather. Later that evening, Megan and Jimmy arrive. The latter actually arrived from Chris Lynch's house, as he had driven there before being blindfolded. Chris then began his bartending duties, giving everyone besides JC drinks since she's only 18. And here comes J... I mean Jebediah Goldstriker, who gives out the first challenge, counting bags of rice. Goldstriker ends up yelling at Jimmy for interrupting him, since he has a habit of talking... a lot. He also tells TJ to go upstairs, as his constant stemming really annoys him. Megan ends up winning the challenge. Yeah. There you go. For the next challenge, Goldstriker asks the contestants to rate themselves on attractiveness and pairs them up in couples based on that. He pairs them up for Q&A sessions and then individually asks them how they feel about their partners. Haley isn't a fan of TJ, saying he has negative riz due to stimming too much. Jimmy tries to explain Chris Chandler to Trisha. At 1.20am, Brian walks to the door. He's a 10th and final contestant, with him seemingly replacing Frank. Allegedly, Frank had connections to Letty's abusive ex. Brian is matched with JC, who is 9 years younger than him. Shinji reveals to Goldstriker that when he lived in Japan, he worked as a prostitute and porn actor. He's a bit hesitant to reveal that to the other fish. I couldn't pay tuition, mm -hmm. so then to earn money, like, I worked in the prostitute for women. Yeah. Oh, you, you were a prostitute? Yeah, like for, for, for women. For women? Yeah. You were a prostitute? Yeah. I, in Japan or in America? In Japan, yes. Yeah, Holy shit, bro. But I still keep hiding from them here yeah, because... <laughs> oh, you don't tell them? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's funny, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and also I did a porn actor. You did a porn actor? Yeah. Okay. Was but, that, that's what you did? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's why my friends put me here. Yeah. Because I have like big fuck brows. Before wrapping it up for the night, Goldstriker says one of them is a plant who is being given a special advantage. Everyone suspects Jimmy since he came with more stuff, though this is due to him just driving instead of flying. Cole gives the following pep talk in the bedroom closet. Am I going to win? Yes. Um, as I say, these people are mostly idiots. And I'm in it to win it. So who do I think will leave first? Hard to say. Probably the, the um, what's her name? Megan. The, the one that sleeps right here. 
Megan will leave first. She's too quiet. And, and not not like cool quiet like me. You know, she, she's quiet like weird. So yeah, and she, she, there's like nothing cool about her. Whereas me, I, I march to the beat of my own. How does it go? I'm, I march to the beat of my own drumming. Yeah. And uh, Jimmy, I, I, no, 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 I, I bet Jimmy will go first because he's the plant. We all know that. And then Megan will go. JC and the, uh, the Summer, they'll stay on for a bit. <laughs> At least for a bit because um, the male viewership, they like women. So, I mean, and then the, the big guy, whatever his name is, I forgot his name, because I didn't even pay attention, but you know, the, the taller one, the only one that's taller than me, um, he's an idiot too, because like, the things he laughs at, just his, like, his, his whole demeanor, it's weird, and my accomplice in this will be Shinji, Shinji is complacent with this, and he will help me, whether he likes it or not. Once waking up, the fish put together a list of everything they need for food. Jimmy begins talking about some random unhinged shit, using slurs pretty frequently alongside Brian. Jimmy and Summer both admit they've been in psych hold, though Jimmy reveals it was for homicidal reasons. Both soon bond over this and surprisingly get along. TTS finally turns on, to which many jokingly accuse Taylee if she's transgender. She is not. Jet mentions to the fish that they should be happy that they have Jimmy in the house, rather than a pedophile, alluding to Simmons in season 1. Many thought the stories he was making up were fake or exaggerated, but his sister denied this on a reddit post. At 4pm, they were all given karate lessons by Sensei Scott. Summer seems to be having a hard time and ends up puking. She has a conversation with Jebediah Goldstriker, saying she's having a panic attack. Oh shit! Reckon that didn't work that good? Now that's how you build yourself a bear. Right there. Now that's a quality bed. Oh. Now that bed didn't hold up so good. So would you say karate is your favorite activity so far? <laughs> I think I'll get better at it if I just keep at it. Yeah. I stay determined. Well, it's worth getting good at. It's going to be really useful. I think so. I just have, I have trouble like... Maybe just mimicking the mirrored uh -huh. gestures, but I, I want to work on it and be better uh -huh. at it. So why'd you start crying again? Uh, um, I think I just got a little overwhelmed all of a sudden, and I felt like I was doing bad at it, and I didn't want to do bad, but I'm okay. Like, uh -huh. I just, I have a really weird thing where when I start crying, it's hard for me to stop, even right. if I'm totally fine. Got it. I just, I do have um, meds that I take for panic attacks when stuff like that happens. Yep. What meds? Uh, it's called hydroxycine. Hydroxycine? Yeah, it's a take as needed for panic attacks. Uh huh. Sounds pretty cool. Thank you. The next challenge the fish must give their life stories. The losers will have to sleep downstairs for the night. Trish tells the story about her divorce, which Ben ends up repeating from the ex-husband's perspective. It was really terrible. Um, I was in a house full of guys that I lived with when he was enlisted to the army. And um, they, we all did acid all the time. And um, <laughs> it was really, uh, it was terrible. They all wanted to fuck me. It was terrible. I did not like it. And um, I ended up getting a divorce with him. I ended up finding out that um, him and all his guy friends shared a pocket pussy together. And um, it was really embarrassing. <laughs> um, and I'm just trying to figure my life out right now. And I live back home with my parents. It was, it got weird though, cause all my friends like, they wanted to fuck her. And uh, she divorced me when she found out that me and all my friends <laughs> were sharing a pocket pussy. 
In the army. Were in you the in the army? army? And I was in the army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, she left me. <laughs> but it's funny. Summer tells the cast about her excommunication from her family. A bunch of people cut me off and uh, I, um, <laughs> that kind of triggered like uh, a moment. What did you do? Uh, really, I didn't do anything, but they said I was like racist, sexist, transphobic, homophobic, like an abuser, like... They, and they sincerely believe that, which is crazy to me and the people who actually know me, but... Shinji talks about his big libido in high school, gearing up to tell them about his stint as a porn actor. But I have like, that was around my puberty, so I also have kind of like sexual desire, like so strongly. Yep. Yep. So yeah. then, yeah. Extreme horny sexuality. Yeah. Yep. Especially the yeah. Yep. Cole is deemed the detective by producers, alluding to his snooping habit. He gives another pep talk, which Vance notices and makes fun of due to copying his style. Jimmy does not like me at all now, <laughs> which is okay. It's, uh, I can just see it in him. So anything I do going forward with him will have that, you know, problem. Which maybe we can fix it. He knows I'm being fake, so that like that first thing didn't work. They're saying uh, they're saying Cole is the new Vance. He's the new Vance. Um, it's it's becoming an issue. It's becoming an issue. I'm going to uh, I'm I'm being replaced. I'm being replaced. Um, you know, next thing next thing you know, he's going to be going. Let's go and and uh, and it's it's gonna it's gonna be a massive problem. A TTS tells Cole to do Vance's signature scream. Let's go! Whoa, let's go, Cole. Shinji finally opens up about his past. Brian shows off his Christmas list, which says, Some pussy from Trish. The audience then votes for Trish to join them, and her and Brian sleep together on a mattress. Cole does some searching and finds condoms in Jimmy's bag. Brian is later seen pouring Go Go Squeeze in Cole's bed and takes Megan's vape. So for revenge, Megan goes into the bathroom and pisses in a cup. This is left in the bathroom and gets discovered later, leading to an argument. After the fashion show, the fish are paired up and work out. Summer pukes again, but tells Jet she's fine and wants to stay in the house. She then moves her bed into the hallway, and says she did this so nobody would mess with her. Jet, looking like a rejected Squid Games character, explains a new currency, chips. Chips will be used to buy drinks at Chris's bar, and their amount will be updated on the website. Summer soon barricades herself in bedroom too, though this is so that she can hide her ships. Right, I still want to confuse the audience. I would never like take my yeah. responsibly here because okay, I know cool. that yeah. get you guys in trouble. Yeah, all right. I was just making sure. That's no, so smart for that. No, that's, a, that's actually pretty smart. I'll give you that. Thank you. Okay, so she did not take. <laughs> People are like scared happened, of me right, right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> While most of the fish play card games, JC is instructed to complete tasks. She mainly takes people's personal items, including all of TJ's shirts. Goldstriker tells a fake story of being abused by his stepdad, which makes some of the fish feel bad for him. Goldstriker puts the fish into two teams of five, and asks them to name 30 people that will be on Epstein's client list. TJ got extremely drunk, and can be seen passed out on the floor without his shirt on. Jet becomes upset that they didn't help fix the beds, and orders everyone to stand in the corner. The next morning, Summer is seen being weirdly energetic. She begins yelling and quoting Mr. Goldstrecker. She has Shinji teach the other fish how to put a condom on. Don't forget to use your mouth to apply correctly. <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah, like, you see? Just like Mr. Yeah, Jefferson. Yeah, gay much? Yeah, that's a gay <laughs> much. Uh, gay much? Shinji is a shining light in the deep darkness of the fish tank. That's why you, you are, are you are light. Some are demanding that Japanese the men perform tricks as a prop. Typical entitled white girl shit. Yeah, totally. Donkey Kong will never get oh, a bed. <laughs> See how much you can do it before it breaks? <laughs> no, I don't With want to do it. Oh, oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. We all hate you, Summer. 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 We all hate you. I bet you do. It's very clear she is a thing for him, and is later seen asking if she can kiss him on the cheek. On the same day, Trisha is seen kissing Brian. This was actually a challenge for her to complete. Though she told Goldstrucker that she really enjoyed the kiss. Brian says he has a girlfriend back home, and only did this so he can stay in the game. 
Summer slips a note to staff explaining her history of mental illness. Goldstriker asks if she needs to go to a mental hospital, as he's seriously concerned for her well-being. She ends up having another breakdown, leading to multiple arguments. So what does that mean to you? I'm chilling, Goldstriker's chilling, Jimmy's having a good time. So what's your issue? No, I, I want to make sure you're okay. Like, I you're, am okay. You're what's your issue? You're what's your fucking issue? What's my fucking issue? You like that? No one likes it when you're yelling in people's faces. I don't care you what can't you like. do that. You can't do that. Yes, all I the can. Time. I just did. Yeah, you're I right. just fucking did. You did. You're right. Okay, so what congratulations. now? Congratulations. Girl, you're acting a mess. Right like now. you're you're embarrassing yourself. Like this is being That's recorded. Crazy to you. This is, what's crazy to me is like like who is sending you up to this? Did you take your meds today? Like for fucking real. For fucking real, did you? Like I'm saying I'm at did you? Okay. No shit. No fucking shit you have to take them every day. No fucking shit. While in the doghouse, she tells Jimmy and Chinji more about the show. Seemingly due to this, though also because of her breakdown, fans ask her to come into the basement. The others are left confused but continue chilling. They are all reassigned bedrooms, and Brian is then seen talking to Trisha privately. He asks if she'd want to have sex, though Trisha is hesitant and wants to ask Goldstriker if that's okay. Okay. Now pull your pants down and ask Kiss for double XP. <laughs> <laughs> double XP. <laughs> Cole tells JC that he kiss her, and she briefly considers. Goldstriker then does a swamp magic exorcism on Summer, and she remains in the doghouse for much of the night. Hi. I need everybody in the room to chant with me. Ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga chaka. The others then play the game bodies. Cole is aloof to the fact that JC stole his chips and starts defending her when everyone else found out. They all calm down once Jet reveals that she'd be eliminated if she didn't. Summer is allowed to join the others upstairs, and starts getting close to Shinji. One by one, most of the fish find out that they were all the insider, someone of knowledge of MDE and Fish Tank. They see it a relief and begin spouting Fish Tank quotes. JC and Shinji are the only ones who aren't fans. JC was contacted through Craigslist, and Shinji was told about it from a friend. The Red Shark then dumps trash into Bedroom 3, signifying that things are going to be much different from now on. Jet actually tells them to stop circle jerking MDE, and Brian is made to believe he's being eliminated. He's not, but he's gaslit into begging anyways. The next morning, Summer is eliminated from the tank. She's given a fair send-off and leaves as the season's first removal. We've seen quite a few many competitors, but we've never seen a competitor as strong and brave as Summer here. Someone as solid and steadfast and willing to fight who's got what it takes to make it all the way. But y'all, Summer's going on to greener pastures. We're sending her on to a better reality show. We're sending her up north to where the grass is green, man. Where the grass roll, the hills roll for days, boy. Where the hills roll for days, green grass, warm sunshine, beautiful farmland. That's right, summer's going on to where the summer never ends. It don't never end where she's going. It's going to be beautiful, y'all. But that's why today we're saying goodbye to our dear friend, Summer. We're saying goodbye once and for all. We're giving all our fish tank goodbye. Everybody, round of applause. Big round of applause. Fish tank, fish Her Instagram account began posting some really concerning stuff after this, including mentions of her loving Shinji despite her only knowing him for four days. It turns out, though, she was hacked. Frank Hassel tried joining a live stream, but the hacker bailed. A poll is then posted to see who's the biggest chump in the house. The two of them, Brian and Cole, are then forced to compete in an elimination challenge. They each take turns doing gator squats while doing the cinnamon challenge. Brian ends up ranting during the challenge as they wait to build up adrenaline. He claims that he's been in a really bad spot and needs the prize money. I don't have any of that shit, man. Really I wake up in a fucking empty apartment! I don't have fucking anything! Right. I don't want to fucking hear it from you, motherfucker! I don't want to fucking hear it! I wake up at 450 every day, that's so Congratulations! Well, I was gonna let you win, now you're being that mean. Bro, I'm trying to hide myself up. You don't know what my fucking life is like. You really fucking well, I don't. don't. I don't have a social life either. It's not about having a fucking social life, man. Oh, so it's, it's about right. having basic fucking needs. 
I don't have any of that shit! I do have fucking soap kitchens! I went to college and I go to fucking soap kitchens! Fuck you! I can't even get through college. <laughs> it seems like Brian wins at first, but Cole takes a W. However, the elimination is called off, and Brian gets a stay. That afternoon, JC makes a sad announcement. After hearing Brian's speech, she feels guilty about only being there for the experience. Actually, you said something, like, while you were competing in there that made me think a lot. You said, um, what'd you say? If you can't, like, crush the ants, you can never walk in something. So, I think my response to that is, like, I don't, I think that might be true in some scenarios, but right now, um, my financial situation is definitely a lot better than you guys. And it's not because I pity your background or anything, but because I think this, if taking myself out can get you guys one step closer to like winning, then I will do that. So um, since I wasn't here for the money, I was here for the experience. Um, today's the fifth day, right? I think that I've learned a lot from you guys. And yeah, so I want to say thank you to you guys. Um, thank you. And, Cole, I'm so sorry that I have to leave you here, but um, thank you to you. And to the audience, thank you guys for supporting me this far, and I really appreciate it. I hope you guys can continue to support me in the future, so thank you to you guys. She returns everything she's stolen, and has a special goodbye of Cole. Well, alright. I hope to see you in the future. There goes the hottest girl in the house. <laughs> oh, wait, no, the other summer left too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so we better get some new people in here. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Right. Thank you for trusting me. I'm sorry for a lot of things that I lied to you about, but yeah, I think. And you should go find out what that tapping noise is, too. Yeah. And the clue in the. Yeah. I'll see if I could still watch Fish Tank without paying money because I don't want to pay. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll see if I could keep an eye on things. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck out there. Good luck to you. Yeah. Not much else happens on day 5 due to all this commotion, as two fish had left the show so early. Brian and Trish get close and eventually move to the closet. John confirmed on Twitter that he sent the following message. Stop fucking you bird brains, this is top J fine Jesus. TTS tells Cole to investigate that closet and says he smells weed, to their confusion. First to fuck in the fish tank. Your parents must be proud. Oh, no one's in there. I want to hear moaning you little shit sacks. Let's hear some shit, JJJJJJJ. Who is in there? Ha 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 ha. Yeah, Cole, get the fuck out. It smells like weed. It smells like weed. Uh oh. As Jimmy and Megan bond, Cole lays alone in bedroom 2. He claims to hear something in the walls, and DTS tells him to kick it down. He thinks it's Jet who sent him that, but apparently it wasn't. Hey Cole, it's JC, I left my stuff, so you can sniff it, hope you like XOXO, see you soon. <laughs> I see a wire. Uh oh. Oh, that's just the electrical. After going nuts the previous night, Jimmy calms down and becomes friendly with Brian. Jet then gives Jimmy a swear jar, meaning that every time he swears, he has to put a fish chip in it. Since swearing is such a big part of his vocabulary, he starts speaking more slowly and makes sure nothing slips out. Expecting to have the ability to play these CDs. After some Christmas caroling, TJ gives Cole a pep talk which he questions. He contemplates messing with Brian by flirting with Trisha. Megan is told by a production that a Roblox account got hacked, which makes her really depressed. Your Roblox account got hacked, basically. Oh. Um, and it's not that big of a deal for us, because we know you're not playing Roblox, obviously, we we're watching you. Uh, but whoever has access to your account is saying stuff about the show. Like I said, it's not that big of a deal, but I just thought I'd let you know. Yeah, your account got off. Yeah, I don't know. 
afternoon, Chiji begins his La Bamba Dominica routine, as whenever that song plays, he must hop around the room. Scott begins another karate lesson, where he has the eight fish do wall sits. Megan manages to do it the longest, to everyone's surprise. Haley gets pissed that her belt was taken, as it was hidden in her underwear. I, I don't care if it's literally anything else, but my underwear and undergarments and shit, that's not cool at all. It's really, really disgusting. She suspects that one of the guys might have done it, mainly TJ, though later the fish agreed that it was Cole, as earlier in the day he had picked them up off the kitchen floor. Jet then tells Jimmy the swear jar bit is over, and he can start talking normally again. Trisha had been getting pretty uncomfortable with Brian since last night and began flirting with Cole upon Jet's request. She calls him an alpha male and they begin shit talking a few of the other contestants. Brian comes in but doesn't seem to care. Over 10,000 people are watching right now, Cole. No pressure. Put them sunglasses on and get that nasty pussy glad out. Put the sunglasses on. Now, Jimmy was listening to most of this through the crawl space that goes between bedroom 2 and 3. Many thought he was gooning in there due to the stain on his pants, though really it seems like he was just gathering intel. He had been in there for a while, and Vance had even handed him a cigarette. Jimmy then argues with the two, but this goes nowhere. I never talked shit about you, so put your light in me. What did I say? Oh, when he stared at me with those big wide eyes, he yeah, was so scared, he was so scared. He talks all the time because he didn't get enough attention. I mean, why do you I think never I said anything about Oh, yes, you did. Oh, about. yes, you did. Yes, you did. Don't you lie. Why do you think I brought that up with Ryan? You think that's just coincidence, child? Cole reveals he knows Trish is messing with him and won't fall into her trap. I'm not a simp either. Who's the simp? The, the guy who just kissed the girl? Or the guy sending cigarettes? Um, anyway. Past midnight, the fish have a party at the reef where Shinji absolutely crushes it at karaoke. Cole fills Brian's shoes with beans and then talks with Shinji. Shinji admits that he misses Summer and wants to hang out with her after the show. Cole Striker arrives and partners the fish up for a cookie baking competition. Jimmy is instructed to keep calling Trish, his partner, a bitch. She's eventually cool with this, knowing it's a bit. Damn, I'm trying to get my bitch to mix this crap. Jack gaslights Jimmy into thinking Trish likes him. Jack gives him a BDSM collar, which Trish puts on immediately. Brian puts red pepper flakes in everyone else's cookies, besides TJ and Cole's. Jimmy is later instructed to find haunted dolls throughout the house, to which he reopens the whole Cole made. He ends up burning his hand on a pipe. Classic Jimmy. Megan is sick, so Haley is made to heal her. TJ is supposed to do the opposite. You better get out. No, 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 and he said, I look like I know how to take care of people, but, so I have to be the nurse. But I, and you better get no, out. No, 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 no. While Jimmy makes a special eggnog, Gold Striker has all the other contestants go to bed early. The only rule, don't move. Santa then arrives at the house to fuck with the contestants. He hates the cookies they made and goes room to room to visit the fish. Who is on the nice list? Trish gets it the worst, as Santa nearly crushes her and does whatever the fuck this is. Santa, please oh, oh, oh. Trish for F -I -S -H -M -A -S. Oh, I broke the bed. Probably drape a leg over her. Yep. 
Chris, let's have you sit up. Trish is going to come out of this yeah. flat like and a cartoon character. Trish, you have to lay on your back. Oh, oh, crap. Okay, so that's almost the tent first. Are you okay? <laughs> you good? Yes. Give me two taps if you're good. All right. I'm gonna warn you. See if this is gonna happen about as much trouble as you want with this. See if that's probably good. Okay. On Christmas morning, Brian and Trisha are seen talking again. Jimmy thinks someone took his notebook, so as an intimidation tactic, he dusts himself on cologne. His aggressive nature really gets to Megan. Once Gold Striker arrives, the fish act out the nativity scene. Each fish takes turns sitting on Santa's lap, telling him what they want for Christmas. Their main challenge involves all of them getting hogtied. Last one to the Christmas tree loses their chips. They have to start over multiple times, which pisses them off. Taylor blames it on Jimmy since he talks too much. He ends up losing and gets into a fit of rage. What's that? What's the deal with that? Come on. There you go, Mr. Jimmy. Very Fuck nice. You. Come on. Hey, Fuck you. Fuck you. None of this was because of me. Retard. Shut the fuck up, Jimmy. Fuck you, too, bitch. Shut the fuck up. Dumbass. Don't fuck with me right now. Yeah, Don't okay. fuck with me right yeah, now. Okay, contain yourself, retard. Christ. This was the final straw for Megan, and for the rest of the day she contemplates leaving the show. The big twist is that Brian's ex-girlfriend, who is referred to as CK, is his Christmas gift. The other gifts are unremarkable besides Chris giving some of them poop and dead animals. Ben then comes down and they wish him happy birthday. Brian, alongside Trish and CK, have a long conversation in bedroom 2. Chris comes in at one point, thinking they're talking about airsofting. We all saw the used condom Brian LMAO nice try J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J Who got that going? Brian, tell her how you said. Just say we made out when you left the closet. Sound of you slapping her how you like it. I said, yeah, I said that because her grandparents are watching. They fucked in the closet. Did not Brian said verbatim, you can do a lot more than you think that long inside the closet. That is not my I know. No, you guys are talking about yourself. We need to talk about Brian, this. Brian, you asked Santa for pussy no. for Trish at the end. You have to be funny on this show, man. Like, what the fuck? Brian and CK had broken up the previous month, but they want to get back together. She feels as if the house is making him aggress, especially due to Brian's relationship with Trish. Brian insists they've done nothing but make out, but a furious Trish soon says otherwise. She begins screaming at the two of them, resulting in Brian wanting to leave. Poop is dumped near them as they make out. Like, you're a psychotic. Psycho. He started this. Baby, don't act Maybe Brian, don't fuck me in the fucking closet, weirdo. Damn CK, you're riding hard for a loser beta who drags you into situations like these. Finds some self worth. Broke dick Brian couldn't even get it up with the baddest bitch in the house. Married T R I S H M A S C K. Blessed be Big Ben. J J J. Go home with your bitch. Show her how loyal you are. He ends up deciding to stay, as he doesn't want to leave like a bitch in the same way Morrow did in season one. By the way, Trish being pissed was a paid mission by Sam, though many believe she was legitimately mad. Jimmy apologizes for his behavior that day, though this isn't enough for Megan. Despite the wholesome talk she had with Chris Lynch, Megan leaves unceremoniously. Jimmy figures out CK's role in the show. She's a secret freeloader, and Jimmy says he won't spoil this as long as she leaves him out of it. And obviously I can't say that in front of Brian because if people were to pick up then, well, your mission would be failed and you'd be thrown out of here. Yeah, don't worry about nothing, trust me. I ain't here for that. I don't want to leave. You don't want to leave. That much is clear. 
But we gotta understand it. And again, it's something personal. No, I know. I totally know what you're saying. I do. I feel like we have an understanding of each other, Jimmy. While Trish is doing community service in bedroom two, her and Jimmy have an emotional heart to heart. The other fish are downstairs shit talking Cole while he's by the doghouse. Jimmy is later seen eating spaghetti with his hands and places a plastic bag over his head in case he throws up. After talk of TJ, he is told to remove it by Jet. The next morning, CK, Brian, and Jimmy conspire to get Cole eliminated by stealing his chips. They feel like he's too untouchable and has a special advantage compared to the rest of the fish. Vance tells Trish that she must teach TJ how to twerk in order to increase the show's sex appeal since there's less women in the house now. Day 9's challenge is the Women's Liberation Challenge, where the women must order the men around, that are each set up into pairs, with the men being ordered around and held on leashes. TJ is put into a dress to act as one of the ladies. Ayo, hey, is that Chris or Mr. Beast? You better find one! Men. Am I right? Uh, men! Okay. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I've got these corgi glasses, and I have no one to show it to! Yes, <laughs> Okay, I'm uh, sorry. Alright, come on, get in the living room. Yes, Mommy. Black Lives Matter, Mommy! Come on, I know you can be loud! Black Lives Matter, Mommy! That's what I'd like to hear! I'm so sorry. Alright, let's go! Boy. Come on! Boy. Sisters gotta stay together. For years no one but me. of art school, I mean, and this is all you can do. This is all you can do. Yes, Mommy. Ooh, girl. Wow. Uh, ooh, yeah. Rub that in. Shampoo. Judge has a talk at the bar with the men, giving them advice. The ladies tell Judge that Cole performed the worst, giving Trish permission to make Cole break. Cole ignores her requests, with Trish asking if he wants to go home or not. He's unclear. During the group therapy session, Ben makes Jimmy and Brian admit their plans to eliminate Cole. Taylee asks Cole about if he touched her underwear. He denies this. CK bursts into tears after Brian says their decision to join the show was stupid. CK feels betrayed by Brian and the production team, as she didn't get what she wanted. Jimmy joins her in the crawl space later to cheer her up. Judge gives a pep talk to Cole to keep his head in the game. Sadly though, this never went through to him. At midnight, the fish play a non-sexual version of Spin the Bottle. TJ ends up winning after licking Cole's feet and armpit, along with other gross shit. Nothing notable happens till the mid-afternoon the next day, where Cole is seen talking to the audience. He thinks CK is an actress and contemplates leaving. He's been feeling sick and takes advantage of the staff. They gift him an Xbox, allowing him to play Halo with Judge. I'm gonna need me to get one of them rocket sticks. Where they got that at? Now I'm a PC gamer by trade. <laughs> by nature I'm an oil man, but I'm also a PC gamer. So when it comes to these here little controllers for little hands, I don't know how they work so good, Mr. Cole. I'm gonna find that rocket launcher that I'm gonna get you. The others conspire once again for him to leave planning to smash the Xbox until staff tells him not to. After kickboxing lessons with Sensei Scott, Cole returns to his room to see his clothes are all cut up. He suspects that it was the staff, but in reality it was Trish. He sits there, talking to the audience again and mentions way too much about season 1. This annoys Judge, who kicks the door after telling him to shut up. <coughs> so, <coughs> what do you do? Bring uh, Halo 3. Hey, how you doing man? Hey. Are you talking about season 1? Um, yeah. Stop. Do you need further instruction? I'll stop. I'll let myself out if that's okay with you. Ben immediately tells him to clean up and pack his stuff, as his replacement will be coming in shortly. Cole is eliminated silently. Taylee is seen finally destroying the Xbox. The other fish are ordered to build cardboard forts, with Chip joining them. The first legitimate freeloader then arrives, Nifty. Nifty is some 32-year-old woman who looks like a crazy cat lady in her 50s. Judge describes her as a content queen, though this soon becomes ironic. The fish soon suspect that one of them is a paid actor, pointing fingers at Trisha and Taylee. For the first time ever, we finally get a good look at the attic. TJ confronts Tay, with the latter having to prove she's not the paid actor. Jet introduces the initiate beef mechanic, but the fish can finish conflicts by competing in a mini challenge. Brian and CK are the first to beef, with the task being who can kiss a fish first. CK kisses Shinji before Brian can kiss Trish, so he has to spend the night in the doghouse. CK cries because of this, and hides in the crawlspace again. 
Instead of comforting her this time, Jimmy argues with CK. You want me to go fuck off? Yes. Is that what you fucking want? That's all people want, fucking want me to do is fucking fuck off! That's all people fucking care about! But yeah, like, listen, just fuck off for a little bit, right? Like, I get that you and Brian are going through some shit. I got my own fucking mission to do. I hope you don't fucking mind. It ain't no personal, but I'm sure you fucking get it. I do fucking get it. I fucking do. Brian is set free at noon and pleads with CK for her to leave the show. He thinks her mere presence is ruining his chances, and she obliges since the show has put her through hell. Nifty is told by Ben to prepare the fish for another freeloader's arrival, to which she gives each of the fish constructive criticism, mainly that Jimmy cusses too much and TJ comes across as too anxious. Taylor arrives and is toured around the house. Judge tells Trish to warn Taylor about Brian. Judge acts as TJ's wingman, setting him up with the new girl. In bedroom 2, Trish is given a medical exam by much of the staff. During the lights check, Judge cuts part of her hair, which pisses her off to an extreme level. No, no, please! Stop, 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 stop. Stop, stop, stop. 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 You look way better. You're gonna kill you. You look better. <laughs> oh! Don't! Stop! You want some of this, Ben? No! Oh my god! I gotta go to my other reality show that I'm Sam! I gotta Get go in my here! Show. I can't. No, this is a oh, bro! I cannot take the judge's hat. Why not? Because something very bad will happen if you start stealing from the judge. Drop the water. No, no, no. No, no. Stronger both of us. The others console her, thinking it was wrong for the staff to cut it without asking. To calm her down, Judge allows Trish to cut his hair in revenge. As punishment for mentioning her contract, Nifty is forced to count rice. She goes to bed after this, being interrupted by the cast having a pizza party in her room after trying to get her to say the gamer word. Jimmy tried cuddling with Nifty for some reason, leading to Judge having the talk with him. From now on, before physical touch is even initiated, we gotta get that verbal consent. I see. Okay? I understand. And um, I think if you, if you play by those rules, we'll avoid jail time. We'll have a bunch of happy campers over here, and uh, no Simmons reference intended, and we'll have a good old-fashioned time, and everything will be gravy. In order to make good content, Bryant rings the beef bell on Jimmy. Jimmy ends up losing the planking contest and has to spend the night in the doghouse. Jet then messes with Nifty by loudly watching Minecraft videos in her room. Minecraft videos while Nini is trying to sleep. What the fuck, nigga? TTS is relentlessly trying to get Taylor to kiss TJ. She does so only because she was offered 250 chips. Nifty's annoying habits start getting to the fish, with them conspiring to kick her out next. For the next challenge, they are made to wear charcoal exfoliated masks, or as I like to call it, pulling a Shane Dawson. They are made to chant while holding pool noodles. The next freeloader enters, being a friend of Alex Stein's named Dunye. Dunye is meant to find the fish in a game of hide and seek. Then they are separated into two teams, with Jimmy's team losing the hot dog eating contest. He blames it on Taylor since she won't eat, and lunges at her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah! Fight me! No. No, 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 no. Judge takes him to another room and will only allow him to stay if Taylor lets him. He apologizes to her and is allowed to remain. Though the catch is that Jet gives him a restraining order, meaning he has to stay 10 feet away from the other women in the house. Nifty gives a horrible stand-up routine, which gets interrupted by TTS a lot. This TTS happens to be the only thing that makes the others laugh. Uh, where was I? Okay, so yeah, so, uh, one of, one of our boyfriend's brothers was like really- Me! Me! <laughs> Me! Me! Me, 
How about you make some easy, cheesy baked potatoes? <laughs> <coughs> Judge then makes her do the whole thing again. He uses this as an excuse to announce the next challenge, perform a 10 minute stand up routine. The four losers of the last challenge, Jimmy, TJ, Taylor, and Shinji, are at high risk of elimination. TJ rings a beef bell on Jimmy since he was a bad teammate, and then loses in a round of swamp wrestling. Jimmy is angered at TJ for challenging him in the first place, so he has an outburst and goes upstairs. That's a Jimmy victory, boy. I'm not letting you shit ever, you fucking faggot! I'm fucking with Fuck y'all! Bitches! Back to the gun, Jimmy! This matter is discussed in another group therapy session, with Jimmy calming down. Judge pulls Trish and Brian aside, bringing them into the attic. They speculate on what the room is for, with Judge giving them a vague answer. This is where the actual game starts. That down there is an audition. In the den. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Put the pieces together. Think about what that means. This is also a secret. You're not to tell anybody about this place. Absolutely. A new freeloader enters out of the blue, a 32-year-old woman named Delaney. She immediately shit-talks Nifty. During the night, Taylor decides to sleep next to the doghouse to support TJ. The fish spend most of day 13 practicing their comedy routines, with the Vance checking in on them. That night, the fish compete for a cash prize. The challenge? Perform a two-minute wrestling-style call-out. Most notable is Taylee's, who uses it as an excuse to lay out everyone's problems with Nifty. I'm the crochet killer, and I'm calling out the biggest, smelliest, nasty bitch in this tank to fight me in the WWE Raw tonight! Live in this tank! I'm calling out Shifty Nifty for this fight! She keeps leaving her dirty, smelly stench all over this tank! She can't pick up on social cues, and quite frankly, I'm sick of it! She can't tell jokes for shit! She pushes her sexuality onto all of us, and she looks like fat Skrillex! She's so nasty, I don't even want to physically touch her in this WWE Live tonight! She's so weak that all I'd have to do is chant kind dunk at her, and all she would do is crap! Like the weak mighty bitch she is! She doesn't know how to close her fucking legs because she's too fat and crusty to move! Move them on her own! She has to be with multiple people at a time because no one can stand being around her for more than five minutes! She thinks she can run this tank, but she can't even stand on her full foot! The winner ends up being TJ, who hilariously calls out Shinji. Konnichiwa, Gook! It is I, the Annipilator! I'm calling you out, Shinji! I'm calling you out! I saw you out in the waters, harpooning! <laughs> With those scanning with those slits, your fuck teeth scraping the waters. I'm calling you out to the ring, not the set, the, 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 the sumo ring, the wrestling ring, the wrestling ring. Son, I'm going to be jumping and hopping on you, man. You're gonna wish you were at Hiroshima, man. Shinji, Shinji, don't try to hide from me with that ninja voodoo. Don't come at me! Ten seconds. With your samurai magic and your woo woo karate! So come kamikaze on me, man, because I'll be ready for you! It's later revealed that one of the reasons Taylee doesn't like Nifty is because she's a lesbian. Tay says she was groomed by one, so has a bit of bias. TJ is made to believe Taylor is an actress because of TTS. Judge pulls him aside and takes him to the attic. They talk for over an hour, with Judge explaining to him what the initiative group is. This logo is the logo for the initiative group. The initiative group, if you want to win the show, you have to be a member of the initiative group. Do you want to be the first member of the initiative group? I guess so. It didn't sound like much of an answer to me. I think we're done here. Brian is then brought up for a much shorter conversation. Dunye accuses the others of stealing his chips, soon singling out Trish. He rings a beef bell on her, with them competing to see who can be the biggest asshole to Shinji. Dunye wins by getting in his face. I have a lot of problems with you, okay? <laughs> Me, my mom, 30 seconds. Arigato, whatever the fuck it is, I want my chips. So, I'm gonna take you and your good ass fake knockoff Versace shirt and buy my fucking chips. Unless that little pink Japanese tongue doesn't have your rolls, it's a fucking chimpy, bitch. 
and I'm done. Taylee finally confronts Nifty and calls her out for being creepy. She makes Nifty admit her doubts on staying, with her telling the good news to Jimmy. Jet tells the fish to stop targeting Nifty, not because he cares about her, but so that he can mess with her too. Since it's New Year's Eve, Jet asks the fish to decorate by handing out printed fish tank memes. <laughs> <laughs> Utah. Wait, dead ass, you were wearing an eye patch and everything? No, they oh. edited it to make it look Oh, like, oh, stop! <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> TTS is soon allude to Lube Cooch, TJ's letterbox account name. Many outside the tank were also able to find a Rule 34 account under a similar name, which has drawings of horse porn. He denies this and talks to Vance downstairs. Delaney finally announces her intent in the house, to perform music for New Year's. She's part of the band Elvis Depressedly, though she gets too drunk to perform. She hits Jimmy in the back of the head with a shoe, though Jimmy surprisingly doesn't hit her back. Jet says he's proud of him, which I find funny because he's basically congratulating him on not beating a woman and tearing her face off like Travis the Chimp. They all celebrate the upcoming year, and TJ manages to kiss Taylor. The main challenge of the night begins, a dance competition. Whoever dances the longest will win, with Haley being eliminated almost immediately due to just cussing at the camera. As punishment, she's made to sleep in the doghouse. After Jimmy is eliminated, Chris Lynch retrieves the CDs. He danced to this for quite some time before staff told him to quit, since the music was copyrighted and they didn't want to get sued. After almost five hours of dancing, it was just Shinji and Trish left. They move things into bedroom three, but they agree to split the prize. Afterwards, Brian is seen getting into bed with Trish. The next morning, Nifty was seen rambling on to TTS, running her mouth, and eventually admitting she dated a 16-year-old boy when she was in college. Jet makes the fish pay rent using chips, which they are all able to do. Jimmy loses at a game of Jenga due to Dunye and goes berserk. No! No! That night, all the fish and freeloaders give their stand-up routines. Delaney uses this time to reveal Nifty's pedophilic past, giving everyone a new reason to hate her. TJ absolutely bombs his set, while Jimmy rambles on for 8 minutes too long. Watching this live, it was incredibly cringy. Dunye, how would you feel if you didn't have breakfast this morning? I didn't. Thank you. For <laughs> Thanks. Also... <laughs> <laughs> I find it funny black people are obsessed with having pimples, the dumbest, most violent dog possible. A poll begins to see who'll be eliminated, with TJ and Jimmy being neck and neck. It's eventually decided that TJ will leave. Judge takes him to the attic, gaslighting him to believe Taylor was a paid actress. Judge brings up the initiative group, giving TJ an alternative. TJ can stay if he takes the initiative and eliminates Taylor himself. Taylor takes this in stride, and the two bid farewell. TJ tries to strike an alliance with Tay, which doesn't go through. Ben tells the fish that they must start a new band, with Nifty being the lead singer. The hostility towards her has gotten to the breaking point, with the others blatantly telling her to piss off. TJ begins calling himself Thomas, as TJ died the moment he had Taylor leave. Judge hates the song they made, so he makes everyone except Delaney eat orange peppers. While they are distracted, Judge finds Jimmy's notebook. In these notes are code words and bits his friends came up with to help him win. He tells the basement to vent those words and gives Jimmy a pat down. A new sound effect begins playing on the speakers. This all enrages Jimmy, leading him to briefly hide in the bathroom 
After a session in the attic, Jimmy is made to believe Taylee is the actor, and Brian confronts him about this knowledge. Who is the actor, and don't fuck me around on this, who is the actor, tell the truth. If I say I'm out. You don't. If I you say- You don't. Who is it? You don't. Who is it? Shake your head yes to the camera if it's Taylee. You see, you already whispered her name and said it was Taylee. Jimmy, hey, 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 look, look, I know, but just don't. Whisper tax, 100 Whisper. chips each. Jimmy caves in and begins crying as his friends use his TTS code words to make him leave. Haley and Nifty get into yet another confrontation, right before another freeloader arrives. This is Octavius Thunder, a man known for boxing and stand up comedy. Judge introduces an upcoming challenge, form into groups and perform a comedy skit. At 1 a.m., Jet makes the bathroom cams visible, with only parts of them being censored. The next day, many of the fish grow sick, most likely due to what they ate yesterday. They mostly practice their comedy skits, with Nifty getting pissed at a role as a dog doesn't have any lines. Are relying on other people? You need to start treating people. We've well, been treating you with respect. Stop being a, stop being act like a, stop being a victim as a white woman. That's what you're See, doing. That's... And I don't care. Like I don't care. Like I said, you're sorry because I know women work harder than you. I don't give a damn. Based a Dunye. Nifty briefly leaves, though comes back while Taylee practices boxing with Scott. Nifty's pillows are covered with barbecue sauce thanks to Tay, though she doesn't notice that for another 30 minutes. Because Brian got the information out of Jimmy yesterday, Judge welcomes him into the initiative group and tells him to go by Peter. He blows the bit almost immediately. Nifty feels unwell and sleeps in Octavius' bed, so he annoys her. Jet makes them all take COVID tests, with Delaney being made to stay isolated in the doghouse due to testing positive. The first supposed Fish B&B guest joins the house, Charleston White. <laughs> yeah, the guy who led a gang as a teenager and killed someone, and recently got arrested for animal cruelty and aggravated assault. Still, not as dangerous as Jimmy. He learns about Shinji's past and immediately gets uncomfortable. Taylor, real name Carrie, moderates a poker game. TJ is filled with excitement, though it doesn't get a good chance to talk with her. Nick Roachford, who designed the house, tours it and causes chaos. Charleston begins mocking Shinji, so he trolls him. Charleston then sexually harasses Taylee, so TTS puts him in his place. Yeah, it's, it's like that sometimes. Yeah, it, 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 listen, you, you got a nice, you got a nice little apple bottle and those nice little jeans you got uh, that you had on the back. Yeah, you got a nice little apple bottle. Uh, and then, All right, Charlie, I heard you gay, bro. That little Jap boy ready to let you taste uh, the egg roll. You finna fry his rice, nigga? Hi right, Charles, you should get that PYT Trish in room 2 to show you her squirt spot in room 1 closet real talk, nigga. Nigga, what? What'd you say about squirting? Nigga, what? You know, that's like a lottery ticket. But you can't okay, wire me up, nigga. It's late at night. Let me go to bed. Mr. White, this is your president. It is common knowledge that Nifty has the fattest pussy in the house. <laughs> Taylor, stay still. Their eyesight is based on movement. Well, I mean, Charles, how would you feel if you didn't have breakfast this morning? I'm, I, 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 I'm not interested in being with anybody right now. Yeah, why they fucking with her? I don't know, man. Mr. White has snuck into the slave master's quarters trying to get that little white girl. Move into position. <laughs> They've been doing this since day one. Charleston, I don't want to be loud. But the little Asian boy is jerking his wiener off on the top bunk. Chick. <laughs> He's not, what man. He's just not. Shut the light Octavius is told to be more interesting, so he rolls around on the floor and trolls Brian. Charleston starts a live stream and makes fun of all the contestants. The next challenge involves the fish trying to impress him. Jimmy wins after shitting on Nifty and gets to spend five minutes outside. The fish are then told to act gay for a day, with most getting immediately into character. I'm a gem. And I want to dominate ass. women. So I'm I a better man. Have you ever wait. seen Anna Man? He makes the oh, man. Oh, I really like to oh. dominate a bitch. Oh. Oh. Come on, no, that's come on, that's my life. Mm, thank you. Oh, uh, come, that's daddy. That's you do. Be your own man. Oh, good. Okay. More. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. More. Oh. Octo rings a beef bell on Brian and loses in a screaming competition. Ah! Ah! 
Judge warns the fish to stop saying production told them to do something. The next person who does will be eliminated. During the group therapy session, Jimmy is made to believe he's going home and heads to the basement. A poll begins, asking viewers who should be sacrificed instead of Jimmy. While that's going on, Tay is made to fix up a $50,000 check made out to Nifty. Due to her hatred of the pedo, she defaces it. Jimmy returns upstairs in Joker makeup that Carrie painted on him. The poll determines that Brian will be leaving, with Delaney, Nifty, and Octo leaving not too long after. In production, we are Brian buddies, and uh, we're gonna miss you. It's been a pleasure working with you. Brian, you did excellent, Brian. Thank you, should, you should be proud of yourself. You were good. We respect the hell out of you for coming. Yes, sir. And if you would have stayed, you probably would have mopped the floor with these fuckers. If popularity wasn't a factor, I knew this was gonna fuck me in the end. Alright, so take your time to say goodbye and you can come meet us in the basement when you're ready, alright? In his room, Jimmy goes nuts. The next morning, the fish are made to take turns wearing a powdered wig. The one who wears it will get to be king, and forces everyone else to do their bidding. Jimmy's turn is clearly the best. You are to refer to me as Mr. Boss, nigga. Mr. Boss, nigga! Eat this out of my hand, bitch. I dropped it, Mr. Boss, nigga! Well, that's fine, bitch. You just wasted some food, but that ain't my problem, bitch. Thank you, Mr. Boss, nigga! Give me a show, bitch. Like this, Mr. Boss, nigga? Oh, that's not an erotic enough show for me, bitch. Huh? That's not an erotic enough show for me. Oh, you me, want bitch. me to be erotic? What do you want? How do you want me to be erotic? I don't know, bitch. Shit, you got the body. Oh, shit. Mm. Oh, my God. You like this, Mr. Boss, nigga? Damn straight, bitch. I like those tricks. That night, Judge initiates this season's version of The Cell. Whoever stays the longest and does the best in minigames will win 10 grand. During the trauma dump contest, Tilly explains in more detail why she hates Nifty. Uh, if you're my family, please stop listening. Um, and this will explain a lot. Uh, so when I was 13, a, uh, an older girl that was like my only friend at the time, uh, like manipulated me into thinking I was lesbian. Um, she was very emotionally abusive to me. She, um, would like cut her name or cut my name into herself and like show it to me as proof and like not let me have any friends and like force me to text her every second of every day and was uh, fuck, was extremely controlling of me and it w it lasted for about uh, two years and she put me through a lot of emotional shit that. I really have a lot of rage for to this day, and it has always stuck with me and has led me to have a lot of the problems that lead into now. Um, she uh, kind of got me into like cutting myself, like I would cut myself to feel better. Um, and she would like get mad at me if I did it, but rubbed it in my face if she did it. Um, she would hit me, she would like try to do things with me and I'd tell her no, and um, she was just extremely emotionally manipulative towards me and I didn't know any better because I was so much younger and confused. That type of shit really disgusts me and she drove me to have a lot of depression within myself, a lot of paranoia within myself, a lot of trust issues, and when I finally broke it up with her, it felt like I had literally nothing. I, I really, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Uh, 
it, it, it gets worse and I just would rather not get into it. Jimmy ruins the mood by taking a shit in a bucket in the closet. TJ gets all of his hair cut off, with Trish just getting hers trimmed. Dunya picks a fight with her, calling her a whore due to her relationship with Brian. And Dunya, two points for starting shit. Total Zulu Nation victory, bitch. African warrior. Oh, yeah. Bitch, you're, bitch, you're, you're ugly. So you you're ugly. Your energy is oh, ugly. Sure, that's the only, thing good, that's you, only yeah. thing good about you, the only thing good about you is your face, but you're trash, sure, bitch. You're trash. Sure. You can't speak your language. You can't even make a whole fucking Asian. Bitch, you can't even make a whole Asian meal. Hold on. You can't even make a whole Asian meal, bitch. You're pathetic. I cook for your nigga, bitch, and you're pathetic. I cook for your nigga, bitch, and that's why you mad, because I didn't want him. I never fucked the white dude in my life, ho. But you're dumb ass. Don't run your culture, bitch, before you fucking come for me, bitch. Dunye loudly wakes everyone up at 6 a.m. just to piss them off. Wake your asses up. That was gonna be that easy. TJ ends up leaving the cell that morning and is punished by having to stay in the doghouse. Jimmy leaves not too long after so he can take his antidepressants. Trish gets annoyed with Dunye, so she leaves too. Dunye is then told by Ben to leave because he's ruining the vibe, leaving only Tay and Shinji. Both of them give room tours. Hello, my name is currently trapped in a room and it's uh, all to win 10k um, I've puked about three times in here um, I've slept on the floor where my puke has been um, I've been shitting and pissing in a bucket which is cool you know um, and we have a special guest on our blog today Shinji um, I'm actually holding him hostage in here uh, so I can beat him so, how we doing? Um, let's give you a little room tour. We got we got the poster with the number one and the cow, which is, you know, pretty tasteful in my opinion. We got the nice little sunflower with the thermostat. And we also have this cute little plant here. And this big tree here that's used for hanging things. Um, as best as I can show you, here's our little poop closet, you know, isn't she cute? Um, right behind that little divider there, there's a bucket full of shit. Of literal human shit and piss. There's also human hair all over the ground, why? I don't know. You tell me. And so that's all for you guys, and I'll see you in the next video, Barofus. Trish pours energy drinks and ranch dressing all over Donye's stuff. So they have an underwhelming argument. Shinji abruptly leaves, giving Tay the W and 10k. Brittany, a new freeloader, is introduced. She's made to join the discussion between Dunye and Trish to squash their beef. All the fish must take AIDS tests, with Shinji seemingly having it. Instead of being depressed over this news, he takes it in stride. Shinji fucks a lot. <laughs> Shinji fucks a lot. Shinji, uh -huh. get in the gym and give me 100 push-ups. Okay, 100 push-ups. Get to the gym and do 100 push-ups, son. He obviously didn't have AIDS, but many outside the Fish Tank fanbase bought it, including Keemstar. Judge uses his swamp magic to rid Shinji of his AIDS. That rice is gonna absorb the AIDS from the broken piece of electronics. Sitting here. That's a whole lot of rice. 
We got to reverse osmosis, absorb the moisture of the AIDS into the rice. <laughs> The fish, complete in various secret missions during the night, where Jumi finds Summer's bobble. Shinji dumps all of the food in the basement, which everyone else assumes was the work of the staff. The house gets swatted, leading to the stream being shut down for a bit. Surprised it took this long, not gonna lie. During this break, tension between Jimmy and Brittany grew, and then simmered down. Jet tells Jimmy he should pursue her, which makes her uncomfortable. Jimmy's made to give a speech about Vietnam in the 70s, which signals Fish Tank's resident Vietnamese man. And sometimes the Viet Cong will make a surprise visit, but other times the American GI were fucking ready for him. Hey, I might give a speech, but one thing I have to correct. Yeah. It's not five dollars sucky sucky anymore. It's fifty dollars. <laughs> oh yeah. The legend himself is back, Ty. Ty, for those of you who don't remember, played a doppelganger of Simmons last season named Simon. It's only white racist Call of Duty Xbox gamer watch this show. Simon, you need to apologize to all the racist cracker white boy gamers watching. F you, cracker ass cracker! Now he's back as a freeloader again under his real name. Judge breaks plates in the sink and throws a fart bomb at them, setting off Jimmy again. But we're gonna be able to fuck up the house. TJ rings the beef bell on the judge himself, so they have a boxing match. TJ gets his ass whooped, though gains respect by not quitting until judge pleads with him. You okay? Yeah. You proved you proved it, okay? You got the balls, okay? You got the big balls, okay? Don't kill yourself. It happened just like I thought it would, honestly. You're the man, buddy. Okay? I mean, liver. I promise you. You're the man. My boy TJ did what Hassan Piker could never face the candy man. That night, the fish are put into two teams and are made to collect various items throughout the house and hoard them in their base. This leads to a conflict between Dunye and TJ, since the latter is exhausted from his fight and is unable to help as much. TTS goes Jimmy into bringing the beef bell on Dunye, but he pussies out. Someone then buys a fish toy which forces them to compete anyways. They're made to impersonate each other, though Dunye quits after Jimmy's performance. Hey y'all, it's me, Dunye. Hey yo, Fish, I'm gonna fuck your shit up, you half past Filipino mixed race bitch. I don't fuck with you, let me tell you. Let me tell you how we do it all down in Florida. Now, we don't fuck around. I know how to cook, bitch. You don't know how to cook. <laughs> shit, okay, he wins. He wins. I sit in the doghouse. During the night, TJ's team steals the other's team's stuff. This angers both Haley and Jimmy, though Jimmy takes it a step too far and almost hurts Shinji. Jimmy blames this on Brittany, since apparently she woke up during the raid and didn't warn her teammates. Jimmy takes her chips and spends much of the day rambling. Judge comes in and makes them all take meds in front of the camera. He gives them all IQ tests while he proceeds to smash things in the background. Alright, uh, cover your eyes. You got them covered? Yeah. Alright, you can open your eyes. Jimmy finds Brittany's purple bag and chucks it out the window, which was already partially open. Jet confronts him about this and laughs after the full explanation. You throw her backpack out the window? Mm-hmm. Really? Did you really do that? Yeah. <laughs> I kept warning her about being a bad chess player. Yeah. It's in the bush. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. A fish toy called Forced Date makes them confront each other. Ty and Dunye complete a secret mission to throw all of Jimmy's stuff into the basement. He notices his stuff being gone and suspects Brittany. For the night, he's elected president and asks Shinji and Tay to help figure out the culprit. Tay correctly guesses it was Ty, so Jimmy apologizes to Brittany. During all this, Brittany and Trish were shit-talking Jimmy, so the former rings a beef bell on him. The tensions escalate. Jimmy believes she was just brought in to force him to leave. You fucking suck at acting! Get the fuck over it! 
You fucking retard, Jesus Christ! Sure it was her though. Oh, it was her. Yeah, I know it was fucking her, all right. And I to fucking apologize to her because I realized there was fucking Ty over there put my shit in the fucking basement. Why the fuck do you think I came in and fucking so apologize? Shut the fuck up, all right. Both are made to compete in sprints, and Jimmy winning. Tay is told by Judge to start taking Jimmy's stuff as well. One of these items is a Fisher Price phone, which was bought on eBay by Jet for cheap. At 1 a.m., Trish rings the beef bell on Jimmy, which allows for Brittany to find the toy phone. She uses a mallet to smash it into bits, which Jimmy hears. Jimmy rushes upstairs and does the unthinkable. Smash it! 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 Don't you ever fucking do that shit again! Don't you ever fucking swing that hammer at me again, you stupid Jimmy, cunt! Jimmy, stop! Jimmy, I didn't stop. do anything! I didn't do anything to her! She right. fucking picked that shit up! Fucking swung the hammer! Don't you fucking do that! What is just happening? Jimmy went full on Travis. I'm sorry, cowboy. <gasps> they broke me. Jet forces Jimmy to pack his things, as everyone pleads with him to get better. Dunye uses this commotion as an excuse to go off on Trish again. Jimmy, I want you to be here to the very end. Is, you know, really I just, all I want you to know is... I hate, I, ha I hate to see you go through this, but not only that, but you, gotta, you gotta stay in your three foot hole, man. Jimmy, I've been trying, man. Fuck. I've been trying all day, man, and it's like, what the fuck am I supposed to do when a woman's like this? She knows that my fucking tensions are high. I know, man, but you gotta know when to hold back. I can see you get jumped a bunch of times, we'll faggot! But like for real! Yeah. 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 Not crying yeah. and nobody's screaming what the fucking hell I have to fucking know, huh? That's still... Remember, okay? I know, man, alright? Don't, don't let that shit ruin you, okay? You gotta you control, control your shit. shit. Like I do control my bitches. shit, but it's like, fuck, when you're in you the fucking heat... But you gotta know... And it's like, no one's fucking keep... Isn't anyone supposed to fucking be down there for fucking being? But no, everyone lets people break the fucking rules. Oh yeah, I beat a woman, that's why she's like still standing. I understand how, that's not fair, how much you guys were talking clearly the fucking show. They brought him back when he was fucking supposed to be gone. But you gotta know, you gotta know. There's so many chances. I understand, but Trish, you don't give shit to the show, but you be quiet and win challenges. I'm sorry, you are boring. Oh. You're boring as fuck. Was this yeah, boring? Yeah. Okay. This was boring, and this was very fucking caring of you. This is Joe Whiteside speaking to you. Like, I'm so serious. What you do here, you haven't gave shit to the show. I've been here longer than you. I've been here for a short time, you and I've been more. I hate to see you grow up. You can't like, cook, man. you can't, you don't clean, I you don't do shit, you don't speak your language, you're not cultural. I hate and literally, you're a person who knows history, 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 history Educated, gave more, and you fucking provoked him. And you think you're gonna win after this show? You you're good at this show, but after this, there's no opportunities after you. You are retarded, nigga. Stupid, stupid white boy dumbass. Everyone wishes him well as he makes his way to the basement. Tay and Dunye talk in private about the matter, discussing how they wish Jimmy would control himself. Brittany then comes in and accuses them of sympathizing with him. Tay is woken up in the middle of the night by Jet, telling her she needs to be more interesting. Tay is made to believe that everyone else, besides Dunye, is against her due to her comments about Jimmy. Brittany rings a beef bell on Dunye, and he loses it in an insult challenge. Tay begins messing with everyone's stuff and rips a stuffed animal in front of Brittany. You're in a self-defense situation. Take it. Trish begins taking the mattresses, and a conflict occurs between her and Tay. The two later apologize and make up, don't worry. The fish perform their comedy skits, with Trish and Tay reenacting their fight by playing each other. Dunye contributes by playing a white version of himself. Dude, I don't give a damn if you're a white, your wife was fucking black, dude. I'm white. Do you not know that I fucking own the fucking country club? I will have your ass deported okay, by but tomorrow. My mom is white. I don't like, give I a don't damn if your mom was white. If you're not white all the way, you're not it. fucking white. It makes And you're honored to no be in my sense. fucking neighborhood, bitch. I'm a fucking Republican. Yeah. Oh, hell no. 
you take this oh, shit. Fuck. Oh no, what the fuck is going on? Oh my god. Oh, oh hell. Oh, oh what? Oh <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Okay, and see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Though Ty Skit wins. Um, uh, sure, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Home The audience pays for a beef between Shinji and Tai, where they are made to yell at each other in their native language. A new freeloader from New Zealand named Oliver joins the group. Trish and TJ are then forced to have a date, where Ty accompanies them. Y'all saw that? TJ became an alpha tonight. He said the N-word. Brittany is seen alone in a room and begins breaking down. She rants about how she hates straight white men like Oliver. She later admits to Trish that she was doing all this just to be a bitch. Oliver rings a beef bell on TJ without knowing what it is. Both are challenged of having to act most retarded. Oliver loses after trying to ask Trish out, so he must spend the night in the doghouse. Due to the heavy rain, the basement starts flooding, so the crew is seen moving around all night. This edit of Ben is then circulated online. The next morning, Vance tells Dunya to give him a presentation about his culture. The twist is that the others must now appropriate another culture, which Trish wins. For the next challenge, the fish must do whatever Ty tells them. He instructs the fish to carry him around as if he was Yoda from The Empire Strikes Back. Everyone, besides Dunye, must compete in milk-related challenges. This involved lots of exercise and puking, with Shinji winning the most. I see some hair floating around there. Right on. Yeah. You guys know cockroaches make milk? Shut up! Cockroaches actually make milk. Yeah, they actually make one good milk. milk. They want non-mammal milk. They make their good milk. Roach milk. Think about Crocodile Dundee blowing the back out of Urkel. Think about a crocodile taking a shit. <laughs> yeah. Think about crocodiles having sex. <laughs> I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit. I'm horny as fuck, man. My hair is This ain't fair, bro. TJ is front heavy because of his massive dong. <laughs> Despite that, Judge tells Shinji to be more competitive and target the other players. Brittany makes her way through the crawl space and cuts up all of Tay's crochet materials. Stupid fucking bitch. Imagine defending someone that hit a fucking woman in the face. Imagine that, especially over destroying a fucking toy phone. You jealous ass fucking bitch. You haven't liked me since day fucking one, since I've been here. What? Didn't even make eye contact with me, tried to say hi to you, refused to fucking be nice to me. I was always nice to you, I always compliment you, and you don't like me, and I don't know why, so this is what you fucking get. You can sit here and smoke your fucking cigarettes so you get lung cancer. I hope you die of boredom, honestly. Fuck you, stupid fucking bitch. Tay soon finds this out, and has a good laugh about it. How does this even happen? <laughs> Damn. That's okay. I'm actually impressed at how quickly this happened. Brittany is surprised she couldn't get a rise out of Tay and just stares at her. Her shoes go missing, so the staff makes everyone else go look for them. Jet gives the fish a low quality camera to use since the stream went down. It's really just TJ and Shinji messing up everyone else. Tai rings a beef bell on Ben 
claiming he's overcharging on drinks due to being racist. He's drunk as shit, so he's pretty delusional at this point. Tight wants to fight Ben in a rap battle, but Ben actually wants to box. You just put my phone again. Like you can't rap, you gonna pick your own challenge. No, so. beef is boxing. Nah, a yeah, beef is rap. You know, All the production up. beefs are boxing and beyond the ring of all. What? I'm not production. No, I'll just come beat your ass. Nah, I'm not. Yeah, gonna red gloves. TJ takes up the challenge, though loses. Next morning, TTS tells everyone about the tunnels dug by Hasidic Jews. Ty thinks the TTS is gaslighting him, despite this actually being true. Brittany finally leaves, though not before she apologizes to Tay. It turns out it was Dunye who stole her shoes. During another group session, the fish begin to dogpile on Trish before the white shark causes a commotion. You're a shit fucking chess player. It's Jimmy, and his reveal is pretty underwhelming. Two bodyguards accompany him, and he makes the fish believe views dropped on the stream due to his absence. He meets with the fish one-on-one, -on -one, confronting TJ about the lube cooch allegations. He taunts TJ about this, though TJ insists that rule 34 count isn't him. Lube cooch is my uh, letterbox. Mm -hmm. And something else. It's not my fault some fucking weirdo has the same account name as I do. Oh yeah, some fucking weirdo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sure. It's just some fucking weirdo. It's a weird coincidence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> and they said I was a legal liability. But hey, don't worry. My lips are sealed to the others. Go we'll have fun. Come on, go have fun while you can. I'm having a blast, man. I'm glad. Jimmy pretending he's a mastermind villain, but TJ is on the show and you're not because you have no self-control. Don't take this crap, TJ. You go downstairs and ring that bell. Stand up to this villain. Take initiative. TJ rings a beef bell on Jimmy, and the latter complains about not being able to follow boxing rules. Jimmy keeps fighting dirty and demolishes TJ, though he never gives up. This not to go badly, you gotta stop it now. I'm not lying, I can't hold myself back on this faggot. Uh, no, you can hold yourself back. Stop pushing, okay? Go ahead. Shut down those players. Yeah, Jimmy, do straight hands. 10 yeah, seconds. You can't. All right. Can't you can't tackle him. Here we go. Don't push him now. Yeah, just punch us. That's all you can do. All I had to do was not ring that bell. Everyone gets what I mean when I send you a woman moment. Go fuck an ally, huh? Time out, time out, time out. I reset away from the window. That's it. Go. Um, no, I'm done. You good? I keep yeah, going. Yeah, you're done, faggot. No, you keep going. Done. No grabbing. I will bang my fucking elbow. No don't grab him, don't grab him, don't grab him, don't grab him, don't grab him. I'm done, I told you. You quit? No. Okay, don't, if you give up, you lose. Not sleep on the dog If you give up, you lose. Just so you know. That's what you can tie to that I leave the show. If you give up, you lose. Jimmy, I leave the show. Jimmy, just hit him with your hands. Is that hard for you to do? Just punch him. No If you knew I knew about this motherfucker. It's okay. Then hit him, bro. Hit him. Yeah, fucking coward. You got three black people here. You got the N one. Oh, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? You play fucking dirty. You do too. Get 
two, three, shut up. until the fight's done. Are you quitting? No. Do you quit? No. Then fucking keep fighting. Go, what are you guys stopping go, for? Go, go, go. DJ hit him, he's fucking he's still going. Fight. Go, fight. Fucking hit his ass. Jamie. Go, fight. Go, what the go, fuck go, are you go, stopping go. for? Get him. Punch him. Punch him. Yes, punch him. Punch, punch, punch. Punch, punch, punch. Cover your face. Punch. I'm done. I'm tired. Then say I quit. Say I quit, Jimmy. No. Stop fucking around like a third grader. Say I quit. I quit the show. How about that? Bye bye. Bye bye. I quit the show. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Ah! Hey, you five fans square. You did not cheat. And I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, bro. I'm proud of you. You five fans square. Yeah, I didn't yeah! Yeah. I didn't like how he attacked you. Against someone you had 30 pounds Against someone you had 30 pounds on! Calm down with this! You told me you were gonna make the show good! Mission failed! During the night, Trish and Dunya hash things out again on a forced date. Tai and Shinji also have one in the bathroom, where they talk for quite a while. Shinji talks about his past as a male prostitute, and admits he got a boner when Summer was being touchy with him. Oliver and TJ's date is pretty uninteresting, and so the former teaches TJ how to do the haka dance. The next morning begins with Tay being challenged to make Oliver admit he's gay. She even tries hypnosis, and he jokingly admits it. How do you feel? I think I'm gay. During a forced date, Ty makes a humorous comment to Taylee that he'd raw dog her. He had to leave not too long after so he could make it to one of his comedy shows, though many were gaslit into believing he left due to his sexual comments. Frank Castle finally joins the tank after being hinted at multiple times. He immediately gets to work by throwing drinks at TJ and waterboarding Dunye. The fish get drunk and are made to build bunk beds. They are made to believe that this is an elimination challenge, though TJ is exempt after throwing up. Tensions between Trish and Shinji rise, with them fighting over pieces of wood. Frank finds Tay's underwear and wears it on his head. He tries to get a rise out of her, but she's over it. She then goes into the bathroom and gives him the underwear she was wearing. Tay rings the beef bell on Trisha, both having to compete to see who Frank likes best. Tay tries sucking up to him by licking his shoe, so she loses. Like, give, it a, this lick, this lick, give it a couple good licks. A good lick, yeah, another one. Nice. She spends the night in the doghouse with Frank hassling her. He pours a gallon of expired milk on her and mops it up with her yarn. When she's allowed to leave to go shower, she spits on Frank. Frank pours some bugs on her, so she has a short breakdown. What's good with you? You want to lick my shoe again? No, dude. You sure? Yeah, I'm fucking... It's right here. No. Want to kiss it? No. Come on. No. 
That was crazy. She took off her underwear and gave it to me. Damn. She went to the bathroom and took it off and gave it to me. To me. <laughs> Take a chill pill. No, dude. That's what made her go viral the first time. Why are you crying? Oh my god. Taylor, don't give out. Dude. These are just some bugs. What's good with you? Fucking kill you, Frank! I'm gonna fucking kill you, dude! You are losing Frank right now. You are a fucking killer. You should feel ashamed. Damn, we're going viral right now. White girl going crazy. World star, world star white girl. And at the end of the day, they're just bugs. And they could be your friends if you let them. Why? Fuck Useful, Oliver. One goddamn thing. Eat the bug or show done yet. Hey, it's me. I am a bug law. Why are you squishing and smashing me? Help 9 11 emergency. Help 9 11 emergency. Help 9 11. Help me. Mmm. Mm, yummy. Damn. None of us hate the bugs. Why'd you lie? Because you were born. We had to wake you up. Frank then smells her panties and reviews them like he's some snobby connoisseur. Describe the scent, please. Like an earthy, an earthy odor with a hint of oak and uh, like a cherry wood after smell. Very pungent, to be honest with you. Not good. This bitch has a yeast infection. He then destroys some of her stuff. Her reaction is minimal, and she gets an encouraging TTS from her dad. New camera is set up in the crawl space acting as a confessional. Tay uses it to confide that she handled the last night poorly and needed to fight back in the right way. Frank calls her out for LARPing as an edgy racist. For the next challenge, they must all present the grossest thing in the house. Shinji presents a bin with his discharge and Jet's hair. Trish has crickets. Donye presents Trish. TJ has a piece of carpet with vomit on it and Tay wins by presenting a cup filled with her piss and vomit. She throws it at Frank, and he tries throwing an egg at her. Um, I have a cup full of my own piss and vomit. Oh! Shit! Ooh. And it, was, uh, it also had a cigarette in it, and a loogie. Thank you. Yeah. Ah! You missed. I did. Ah! Sam and Nick's After Dark show commences, with Airsoft Fatty coming in to mingle with four women. He ends up picking the weird older Russian chick. One of these girls, Allie, stays in the tank for the night. Chris later throws a flashbang into the lounge. <laughs> After that, Jet begins the Mommy Baby Challenge, where the fish are paired up. TJ, Allie, Chris, and Dunye act as the moms, and Tay, Trish, Oliver, and Shinji act as the babies. Hey, Taylor, look at the camera and blink twice if he has a boner. TJ, boner. Oh! This is a baby. That's inappropriate. Inappropriate talk around a baby. Mm -hmm. Your dreams finally came true, Luke Gooch. Congratulations. Aww. Uh -huh. <laughs> Frank begins attacking TJ and Tay, resulting in them losing. The winners end up being Oliver and Dunye. An audience-initiated beef between Trish and Shinji has them trying to make Chris laugh. Shinji fails at this by reciting old gags. Vance hands everyone scripts the next morning, telling everyone to stick with the routines. Two opposing pairs form, with Shinji and Tay having to fend off TJ and Trish. During a party for Chris, Trish is made to derail the script. She gets hassled by Frank throughout the day and destroys her belongings. Stop. So don't act, actually don't. Actually, don't. Okay. okay. I think you should just break it. Not 
Welcome that bitch get critical. Shinji rings the beef bell on Trish again, but loses again. The contestants are then made to find crickets throughout the house, with the loser having to replace Shinji in the doghouse. After Tave throws her piss at Frank again, Jet bans piss as a projectile. Trish lays the press in the confessional, so Judge comes in to cheer her up. Hey, sweet cheeks. Hi. You gotta speak up in here because the mic's busted. What are you even saying? Start over. <laughs> Start it over. What were you saying? What were you saying? Damn, some real shit? I don't have the stomach for that. That's fine. Just do it again, though. Louder. I'm gonna go play on my phone. Okay. Lock this. Thing. Or don't, actually. Start over. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to leave. I need to hear what it's about. I'm just. It's basically nothing. Basically nothing. Bye. Peace. Okay, I'm gonna walk down the stairs now. Okay. You're such a liar. I was just talking about today. What? <laughs> what happened today? Move this way so the camera can see you better. I don't want them to see me. Yeah, well, cry on the camera, okay? No. For my show. No. Can you cry on camera for my show? I've already done that. Okay, do more. Cry and scream. <laughs> During a group therapy session, the fish are made to reevaluate their strategy in the tank. This gives them, especially Trish, more confidence in the game. Day 29's first challenge involves them impersonating each other, with the funniest moment being Trish's impersonation of Dunye. Now everyone is Dunye. Everyone act like Dunye. Shut up, bitch! Shut Eat up, my ass, bitch! Eat Shut my ass! Bitch. Shut up, bitch! Eat my ass! Eat my ass! Eat my ass! Eat my ass! Tay is told to make the others believe they're in some sort of psychop mentioning some of Jimmy's conspiracy theories. The others just go along with it. Chris begins giving out fake missions, which Jet encourages. He makes this part of the next elimination challenge, with whoever gets the least amount of Chris points going home. While the fish complete certain challenges, the freeloaders hang out at the bar, figuring out ways to sabotage them. Frank pressures Oliver to ring the beef bell on Dunye since the latter has been making fun of him all day, especially in relation to his missing shoes. During their boxing match, TJ goes upstairs and steals all of her shoes again. Dunye fights dirty and wins the match. Get in center. Center. Come on! Come on! Let's go! Come on! Let's go! Come on! Move to the middle! Bitch! Okay, 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 okay. Stop, 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 Frank, along with Josie, pressure TJ to drink more while at the bar. TJ goes upstairs to avoid this, and Frank has a talk with him about standing his ground. You don't have to run away. Why do you run away? Because I don't want to stand your ground. Just say, yeah. fuck off. Fuck off, I don't want to drink anymore. anymore. I'm good. Say it. Fuck off. I don't want to drink anymore. I'm good. Go finish your drink. No. Why not? Cause fuck off. Vance then gives Frank a pep talk, which leads to an awkward interaction very reminiscent of one from season one. We had our, we had our, we had our chicken. You don't have your glasses, you can't see how close you're getting. I'm trying to touch noses. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you pepped up? Yeah, oh yeah, I know. That was like some smelling salts. Yeah. Frank begins to hassle Shinji some more, resulting in the latter's glasses getting destroyed. He rings the beef bell on Frank, and both must compete in a sight test. Frank loses since he also needs his glasses, so he replaces Oliver in the doghouse. Frank offers one of the fish immunity from hassling for the next few days. Tay takes him up on this offer and challenges Oliver. Whoever is the most annoying in the next 15 minutes will win. Tay loses and replaces Frank allowing him to annoy Shinji some more. In the meanwhile, the fish set up an oiled up tarp in the living room. Chris has the fish compete for more CP by having them sing karaoke. Trish fails miserably due to her twerking while singing the alphabet. Oliver and Shinji hide a bucket of worms in bedroom 1 to use later. 
Shinji rings a beef bell on Chris, winning in a contest to see who can make the best monster noises. This pisses off Chris, so he leaves the doghouse and threatens to abandon the show. He's obviously bluffing. Staff throws Shinji and TJ's belongings in the toilet, making them believe it was Taylee. Throughout the day, they get the revenge on her. Tay finds her destroyed belongings and gets hassled by Frank. She holds a pair of scissors in self-defense. Seriously, give me that fucking shit. Don't do that. Then That's fucking stop. That's a bad idea. Then bad idea. Then stop. Don't do that. Stop touching my fucking shit. Drop the scissors. Drop the scissors. Can I take the scissors? Back. No, 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 you back up. Okay, I'll get the scissors. Thank you. TJ brings a beef bell on Tay and the two box. Despite being 50 pounds lighter than TJ, Tay still manages to hold her own, though still loses. 10 seconds. 9. Throw some shit. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. Stop! The fish are then split into teams and are made to guard two buckets of milk and rice. This leads to a physical altercation in one of the bathrooms. A new freeloader then arrives, Mr. Beast. Well, this is actually skitzy. The YouTuber known for his role as Mr. Beast in that Freshie Canal rap battle. Mr. Beast! Welcome to your final test. I'm Mr. Beast. We can scrap the yes, cause I've never missed a beat. Skitsy, real name Greg, leads the fish in various challenges, ending with him boxing Shinji. Greg was only supposed to stay for the night, but that plan soon changed. A cage is built for Dunye, which is where he'll stay for the remainder of the show. Jet shows Shinji a clip from the show that made him go viral on Japanese Twitter. To reward him for this, Jet gives Shinji some chips. Chris lists off his favorite women, before Jet asks if he wants to get married to Trish at that very moment. Greg, still in his Mr. Beast outfit, coordinates the wedding alongside Frank, with Chris deciding to not wear any clothes. I know he's so fat that he censors himself, but I still gotta blur it. Do you, Chris, take Trish to be your lawfully wedded wife? Till do. death do you part? You. you do. And Trish, do you take Chris to be your lawfully wedded husband till death do you part in, in health, not in health, sickness, whatever? <laughs> do you I, take this man? I do. You may now kiss the bride. After the marriage, Trish hides from Chris in the confessional. The next morning, Greg begins regretting his decision to move on to the show. He hates the whole Mr. Beast bit and is bothered by the harassment of him. He reveals to Judge that he dislikes only being known for the Mr. Beast meme and wants to shake things up. Judge agrees to help, insisting that he shaves off of the mustache and grows out some real hair. He concludes the Mr. Beast bit by locking up Dunye in the cage. Hello guys, I'm Mr. Beast. And today, we are putting this fine gentleman in a cage for 12 days. <laughs> Mr. Beast, tell him about the cage. Tell him about the gentleman. This gentleman, he is gay. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going in the cage for being a naughty little boy. So this is good stuff. And he's going to be in there for quite a while. So my boy, get on in. Mr. Beast, can he get out of the cage? Will he be able to escape? Not for 12 days. Exactly. How solid is the wood that this is made of? Pretty solid. Very solid stuff. If I... Pretty solid. There we go. Now, Mr. Beast, how's he going to go to the bathroom in there? I'd imagine through cups. Bottles, cups, oh, fuck it. <laughs> and Mr. Beast, what's he gonna do for entertainment? Does he have any fun stuff he can do in there? Maybe. No? Probably nothing. Nothing. Despite being forced to live there, Dunye is allowed to smoke weed. The fish then build a nest for Chris and are made to impress him for additional CP. Draining his balls is your only shot at winning, Tay. Just focus on those pretty blue eyes. Like pools of cool water. To make things interesting, Greg brings a beef bell on TJ. 
Both are made to do Family Guy impressions, though Greg ends up quitting the challenge. I The next morning, they're all made to dress up as superheroes and come up with catchphrases. They then spend a while role-playing. Chris offers Tay to be his secretary in order to help him tally CP. Alex Stein, who you'll remember from last season, joins as a new freeloader. He comes with his crew to film an interview with the fish for his primetime show, though first he films Dunye in the cage smoking weed. During the interview, Alex accuses Tay of smoking some of Chris's weed. She took a test to prove her innocence, and she's allowed to stay. I understand that, because I would feel the same way if anyone else did it, but I know I did not, so... Y'all are just trying to pin some shit on me. OJ was found not guilty. Did OJ murder Nicole Brown Simpson? That's a horrible analogy to make with this situation. <laughs> did OJ kill that bitch? Uh, he definitely killed that bitch. She did cheat on him a little bit and was seeing Marcus, uh, the, Marcus Allen and stuff. Yeah, I'm kind of on OJ's side on that whole deal. I didn't say that publicly. Uh, delete this part of the show, Jimmy. There's tricky things about this house. There's smells that come and go. I notice you're kind of rubbing on your genitals. Are you uncomfortable? Is there a reason why you're kind of fondling your, your testicles while we're live on the internet in front of thousands and thousands of people? No. And you know you have sexual allegations. They say that you're into horse porn on the internet. Drawings of horses having sex. It's weird. Y yeah, I know. It's weird as hell. I mean, that's an understatement of the year. I mean, you do like horses though, right? Not in a sexual context. <laughs> Have you ever liked a horse in a sexual context? Have you ever seen a horse and looked at their hog and be like, that's a big, nice hog? I have not. <laughs> be honest, because that's not gay. I mean, you can be proud of a horse's their dong. It's a, it's a majestic being. Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> Trish is given a fake pregnancy test and laughs off the results. Though due to this, she accidentally reveals that she did have sex with Brian while the two of them were in the bathroom together. Alex, thinking that TJ stole his shoes, rings a beef ball on him. Both are made to box, though Ben interrupts them and makes them beatbox each other instead. Greg contributes and shows off his beatboxing skills. Start beatboxing? Go, Alex. Bitches on my dick! You can suck my shit! Skin, head, gonna be dead! Gonna make your face really fucking red when I slam my fist in your nose, kicking your ass for taking my clothes. Cause I like to fuck lots of hoes. I'm a pimp on a blimp, eating shrimp, and you ain't shit. And when I'm done with you, I'm gonna kill you and your mom and your dad and your cat and your dog. I don't give a fuck. I hop like a frog. I like to get ribby, ribby, ribby rabbit. I'm gonna kick your ass and I'm gonna grab it, throw you in the gutter like some trash. Then I'm gonna stomp on your white ass. You're a skinhead about to be dead. I don't give a fuck because I'm like right said, Fred, let's go! All right. That's, you still got 48 seconds, oh, but... Bitches on my dick, still talking shit. I don't give a fuck, cause I got that click. Getting views on the internet, gonna make the pussy wet. You look like shit in your clothes, you ain't gonna get no hoes. You are broke, like a joke, no money in the bank. And you stank, you look like shit, and you act like it. I feel sorry for your mom, cause she birthed you all wrong. You look like you got spinal bifida, and you need to get rid of ya. Out the house, like a mouse. I'ma fuck you and your fat ass spouse. You are a bitch, you can suck my dick. I'ma kill you and take your shit. I'm a pimp on a blimp, and I'm always eating shrimp. Cause I'm prime time, double 99. When I grind, I always shine, you little bitch ass. Done. You're done. Okay, TJ, you ready? <laughs> no. One minute, 30 seconds on the clock. Alex easily wins, so TJ spends an hour in the doghouse. Jet encourages TJ to act and dogpile on someone. He confesses that he wants to listen to Jet, but also wants to continue being the good guy of the house. TJ begins working with Alex, and they free Dunye from his prison. I can't even... God, why can't I bust it? Yeah, kick it. Oh, there we go. Gosh, let's see if I can kick that one so good. Well, that was free. Technically. Yeah, you could kick that one if you wanted to. I would feel bad. <laughs> Look, he's like not getting out there. He like doesn't want to. All right, uh, Danielle, you're free. All right. Good I'm, job. I'm just really high, so. All right, Oliver, you're fucked, dude. Daniel. You're fucked. During this, Greg can be seen using a cabinet door to bobsled down the stairs. Woo! Dude, that is cool. 
hell yeah. <laughs> to earn more CP, Trish uses a sponge on a stick to wash Chris, who has taken loads of erectile dysfunction pills. During the day, Frank begins hassling the fish even harder, leading to the fight between him and Greg. Wait, watch out, hold on. Hold on, wait, gotta readjust for the promo. Great, keep that anger, I like that. A new freeloader, Jackie, joins a tank. She seems to be the first legitimate Fish B&B guest, meaning she paid $25,000 to stay the night. Before she arrived, the Fish were told by Judge that she's an OnlyFans girl. They conspire different ways to bully her for that fact, though in a subtle way. When she arrives, they are made to impress her. She seems weirdly fascinated with Chris, and soon lays down on the floor of him in a sexual way. Things get freakier when she brings out the vacuum and starts sucking on his fat. She and Shinji then go on a fourth date upstairs, with Greg third wheeling them. Chris then becomes the fourth wheel of the date when he barges in, still naked. Hey! Hi! I thought you were with me! I don't know what's going on. I'm like, I'm like on a. You had your ass over on my face, and now you with this motherfucker? This dumb fuck, you don't even got a car? <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm like taped. I'm taped. I'm taped together. This is my chaperone. Ha! I have to be chaperoned now because of what I did. I'll tell you what, Tootsie. If you get done with this loser, come be with a bruiser. I got, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Greg rings a beef bill on Judge for the way he cut Jackie's hair, so he's made to fight Ben. Greg actually puts up a good fight and manages to win. Go get him! Go get him! Go get him! Get in his face and punch him, Greg! Fuck him up! You're fucking done! Kill him, Greg! Punch him, Greg! Greg, go! Come on! Yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, oh, oh. Jackie soon rings a beef bill on Trish since the latter threw bathwater at her. They both tired themselves out during the boxing match, though Jackie's the clutter of the winner. After getting hassled a bit by Frank and sat on by Chris, Jackie leaves. During the night, the fish compete in a challenge to stay inside the crawl space. Frank sits outside and throws both crickets and small insults into the tight space. Oh. oh my god, Frank. Kindly fuck off with that. That is so terrible. <laughs> no, no, some more. Let's get some more. Let's get some more. While this challenge goes on, Frank and Alex talk about Boogie2988. Just at the point now where he needs to make money so bad that he'll just degrade himself to any level, basically. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> he said degrade himself. Like, I know he's not having financial success or whatever, but I guess he lost that money to Bitcoin, but it doesn't make sense. Was... A lot of the numbers in that were just fake, too. Like, the 200 on prostitutes and stuff. Like, that's that not was real. Fake. That was yeah. bullshit. After that ends, Frank starts hassling Chris by taunting him with his weed pen and tickling him. Big bro I am trying to rest my whittle head. <laughs> Back off, big bro, stop it. <laughs> stop, dude, stop! All of a sudden, Chris guy. All of a sudden, Chris guy. All of a stop! Chris guy. Wait, stop! A jab, stop. a card, and a block. He's gonna bite you! I'm gonna tickle the baby! I'm gonna tickle the baby! The baby! Quit the fight! Stop! Tickle the baby! Right! Enough! Tickle the baby! Before everyone goes to bed, Frank bids them all farewell. During the day, Chris assigns them new challenges. Someone will be eliminated within the next two days. Chris gets called out for a creepy challenge he made up for Trish, for her to streak throughout the house. Trish later retaliates by pouring a thing of water on him. Tay pours crickets and Chinji's piss on Chris, and then flour. This infuriates Chris more, so he threatens to leave again. Jet insists the fish find his weed pen so that doesn't happen. During a game of Capture the Flag, the fish are made to crawl around on the floor, thinking this will be for elimination. While Judge and Trish talk in bedroom 2, Chris comes in and takes the shit on the floor. He shows it to the camera and inserts it on a fork. Insisting Trish eats it. Tay goes up into the attic and sees a pair of clippers. She takes the initiative and begins cutting her hair. <laughs> Dude, look like a baldy. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> oh, look at your name is Randy. <laughs> Damn, that's a good one. <laughs> but don't give me like a like a non-binary name. Are we ready, guys? <laughs> I okay. Hear me out. I fucked up a little bit. I've never done this before, but this is wild. <laughs> Hey Randy, nice to meet you. Like your style. I actually know a girl named Randy whose mom made her like cut her hair short like this all the time. I'm not kidding. But what are we thinking? I'm actually not that disappointed in it. It makes me feel like I need to get my ears pierced now. Which I'm not mad at, because I've been meaning to do that anyways. What are we thinking? And I'm sorry, mom, and I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> KK just woke up. Why are you bald? Love Vlad from Romania. <laughs> Vlad, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Check the attic camera. Joke's on you. I like this even better. Kiss the camera. Patriots in full control. Mm. Never give up. Never surrender. Dude, I'm... I actually am not mad at this. Holy fuck, Tay. The skinhead arc is real now. Now give us a proud sig howl to seal the deal. <laughs> no, I really can't do that now. <laughs> Alex leaves the tank that morning and gives his chips to Tay. Chris makes the four fish compete in challenges, with Shinji and Trish having the least amount of CP. In the final round, both are pressured into shaving their heads too. Shinji does, and Trish asks if there's anything else she can do. She admits defeat and is formally eliminated. However, since the crew likes her so much, they allow her to stay as a freeloader. She's content with this, realizing the other three will make suitable finalists. A lot. Okay. Keep Trish as Greg's personal Discord kitten. <laughs> oh my god. You could do that. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's like, <laughs> yeah. Discord. What do you think, Trish? I totally agree with you. Like, I definitely think these three have what it takes to like compete. They're very competitive and yeah. You just need a place to live now. Well you're home. here. You're home. <laughs> Welcome home. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I love you here. <laughs> if it was anyone else, I, I know it's a letdown that you're not going to win Fish Tank, but as proof that everyone here does like you, we've never kicked off a contestant and just said, just just hang out, because we yeah. like being around you. Can we get a round of applause for Trish? Is you very were, elite for sure. You were you were last place in points, and um, as much as we're joking about rigging it, um, I think I think uh, these three outcompeted you in this challenge. Um, do you want to stay here? I'm down. <laughs> You're down. We only got a week left anyway. All right, done deal. Freeloader. Final three. Her first act as freeloader is to smoke weed and shave Chris's head. Greg talks with Judge, wanting to leave since he agreed to stay for only 5 days. Judge insists he stays a bit longer, saying it'll all be worth it and he'll be paid handsomely. A poll is set up to see if Dunye should stay or not. The audience votes for him to leave the next morning. He's now the longest lasting freeloader in fish tank history, staying 2 days longer than Chris did in season 1. Just wait till I catch you slipping on Beaver Street, boy. Bitch, Nodding off and shit, I'm gonna take you to school, son. Fatty tries to sleep in the confessional, but gets locked in by Tay. Dude, come on! You can't walk so in here like that! Tay alert. Red alert. Tay alert. Tay alert. Red alert. Warning. This is ridiculous. This is the gay guy. This is the gay guy right here. Warning. Warning. Red alert. It takes him a good six minutes to break out vowing revenge on whoever imprisoned him. He finds out through TJ that it was Tay, and gives her a boring ass lecture about how she needs to take the show more seriously. Her, Shinji, and Oliver plan a prank for Chris. Tay ends up dunking a bucket filled of dish soap, oil, mussels, blue paint, and grits on Chris. Once he steps out of the shower, Tay dumps flour on him. They get ready to dump fake piss on him, but hear him crying downstairs and decide to stop. A beach is set up in the living room, with Greg being given the position of a lifeguard. Chris being his enforcer. 
The others are told to break Greg's rules, but in a funny way. During this, Greg dances to Party Rock Anthem by LMFAO. <laughs> They then play that Freshie Canal rap battle in the background, as everyone slowly vibes to it. You're playing tug of war with your ex, but the rope is your daughter. What?! what? Say who's <laughs> like you what? TJ calls Jed aside, mentioning that the pain in his ribs has gotten worse. He's had this injury for quite some time, but today was a tipping point. TTS lets everyone else know that he's been removed from the website's leaderboard. This makes the others depressed, though they get pleasantly surprised when the crew brings in a cabinet. He'll still be able to compete despite his cracked rib, though won't be able to do as many physical challenges. The gang did compete in more beach challenges, where Greg gets really drunk. Later on, Shinji has serious thoughts of leaving the show, thinking he's falling behind compared to Che and TJ. Judge reassures him that he'll do well in the finale, motivating him to stay. And you said the thing that's most important to you is your fan base. Yeah. Your, the respect to your fan base, even if you suffer and perform poorly, that that will lead to them respecting you. Mm. I think that that's important. Yeah. That's just my opinion, but I think that's pretty important. Anyway, do you uh, we'll we'll leave you alone. We'll leave you here in the bunk to think about it. Okay. What about your dreams, Shinji? Okay. Fifty thousand will help you get your dream to come true, Brotherhood. The fish and freeloaders agree to start ganging up on Taylee, seeing her as the season's villain. In a confessional, TJ insists that he's given Tay too many chances to be friends with him. She's prioritized strategy over friendship, and shouldn't win. Fuck off to the Patriots, the fat faggots, chud, ra racist, incel bitches that keep trying to tell me that Shinji's a great competition, and that I'm handing it to Shinji. I know your guys' this game. Maybe I will lose to Shinji. I don't plan to, but maybe I do. I would be... I... If he had the money instead of Tay, I would be happy. The next morning, TJ leaves to see the doctor to check on his cracked rib. Tay becomes self-aware of her villain status, and apologizes to Shinji for her recent behavior. TJ returns with pizza, saying that his rib was just badly bruised, not broken. That day, sewage began to fill up in the basement, so Jet and the crew had to move up all their equipment into bedroom 2. It takes Jet way too long to figure out what a feedback loop is. Because of this discrepancy, Jet makes the freeloaders producers for the day, having them run challenges. TJ tries to get inside bedroom 2, leading to Ben chewing him out. What the fuck are you knocking on our door and telling us for? Oh shit. He talks about this incident later downstairs, leading to Ben starting another argument. Well, I hear you talking about us, like we're not upstairs listening to what you're saying. You're just, well, no, stop for a sec. And you're saying that you went into B1 and we we're trying to harass you for coming into B2, and, and uh, if you want to talk shit, then just say it to my face. I'm right here. I was trying to go into B1, then you guys thought I was knocking on the door for B2. Well, is it our fault that all, all of you were standing in a, in a line in an upstairs hallway? Just like, it looked like you guys were playing or something, so forgive me for thinking that you walk in, And you know what? I did hear knocks. So if it wasn't you on B2 door, then, you know, I was mistaken. But the fact that you're down here at the bar and you're rehashing the whole incident over again tells me that you want to talk shit about me behind my back. 
No. You understand? Okay. So try running a show with shit water coming at you, and then you tell me if that's more annoying than walking past the door and someone asking if you knocked on it. Okay? Okay. Until then, don't talk shit on me. I'm right upstairs, and I don't appreciate you talking shit. Okay? Okay. I'm sorry. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to apologize. I'm just asking you to not do it again. TJ, along with Shinji and Tay, discuss recent events and decide not to be as hostile towards each other. One of the walls is completely destroyed by Max, with Greg making a reference to The Shining. There it is. Oh, oh. Oh. What's that? Max. Max. Oh. I think you want to get out of the way before the breeze hits you. Yo, your name Johnny? That night, after an uneventful game of Dungeons and Dragons, Greg has a camera strapped to him. They all play beer pong, with them getting quickly shit-faced. Greg Cam! It's fucking Modelo time! Modelo time! Show them why the Wayne State Warriors run Detroit negative. Yeah! 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 Jet interviews the final three, exposing their true feelings of the other contestants. TJ goes to the doctors again to check on his eye, finding out he has pink eye. Jet makes him wear a protective suit since he'll be contagious for the next 24 hours. Tay blames Chris for this, since his bare ass has been on the couches multiple times. This leads to one of the most intense arguments on the show. Don't even act like you've been choking this whole fucking time. No, I'm not You're the one throwing that. piss on me! Chris, I haven't- You're the one that threw piss on me! This gets interrupted by Cowboy, who begins administering polygraph tests. 
The only notable information we got from this is that Trish finds Judge the most attractive in the house, Shinji was fond of men sucking his dick during porno shoots, Oliver confirms he isn't gay, Greg says he drew rabbit porn for someone on Discord, and TJ confirms that he is not Lube Cooch on Rule 34. Are you Lube Cooch? Um, y yeah. I mean, better box. What's that? I mean, I, I get, I'm, I, I, I guess I am Lube Cooch, but not the infamous one, I guess. During all this, Chris rings the beef bill on Tay, though doesn't want to box her. They instead compete to see who can piss their pants first. Chris does it immediately, sending Tay to the doghouse for the night. Don't fuck with me! I have the power of God and anime on my side! Ah! During the previous day, fans found an embarrassing video Tay made when she was 15. They played over the speakers, making her sway out about it. Her and Chris make up and listen to TJ and Shinji's upstairs conversation. They conspire to eliminate Tay again, planning out ways to make her leave. Tay and Chris make plans of their own, with the latter going around to annoy the others. Frank returns to the tank and begins flirting with Trish, as he found a DM from her last summer saying, How much, daddy? She says she was asking for one of his shirts, but he continues bugging her. Chris gets annoyed with Greg and rings a beef bell on him, though Jet comes in and says they're done with that. Frank begins tickling Chris again, just like old times, annoying him even further. Uh, tickle the baby, tickle the baby. Stop! Frank, stop! Frank, stop! Uh, Frank, stop. Tickle the baby, tickle the baby, tickle the baby, tickle the baby, tickle the baby! Tickle the baby. <laughs> Chris doesn't want to initiate beef with Frank, though Judge convinces them to do some light sparring. Various other boxing challenges commence, though not due to beef. This includes Frank vs. Oliver, Vance vs. Shinji, and Greg vs. Vance. Greg does surprisingly well and manages to defeat Vance. This season's last new freeloaders are introduced, the chickens. All ten chickens were given their own bio on the website, with them just hanging out and being coddled by the cast and crew. That's smart now, you don't gotta buy the fish food either. Yeah. Ew, just shit it. Oh, yeah. Make sure you don't wash your hands after touching those chickens. Now, interestingly, they don't have assholes. They have a cloaca. Each pick one chicken and train it to fight. Final challenge. Train it to fight. Frank gets Greg drinking, and they all play truth or dare. Many interesting things are admitted by the fish, mainly that Shinji has a high body count of over 300. Chris is pressured into drinking with them, but he declines and hides in the crawl space. The others move the game upstairs, getting Chris to join in on the fun. Greg's fantasy is Tay in an Easter bunny suit um, pegging him yeah, while playing stupidity toilet on YouTube cream eggs for all. Should we repeat that? What is that song, Greg, by fucking Kanye and Jay Z? Oh, no. The guys in Paris, they're in Paris. Damn, who been eating yeah. tuna? You know what I'm talking this about? This smells like a goddamn you know, fishery up in here. You know the song? What would you call them, Greg? Come on. A couple of fellas. Who? What else? <laughs> What's the name of the song? I can't remember the name of the song. Neighbors. Neighbors in Paris? <laughs> Friends. Also, hard motherfuckers want to fly at me. Can you rhyme with Diggas or something like yeah, that? Yeah, Diggas in Paris? Diggas? Chickens? Come on. Did you rape somebody in self defense? No. <laughs> to defend Gregory yourself. Guy. Yeah, fuck rape. Gregory. Yeah, fuck guy. rape. Would you rape fuck a rape. Would you rape a Nazi? Gregory. Bro, what the fuck. Would you rape somebody who said the N word to you? 
Now, Somebody forces die. you at gunpoint to say the N word. Would you rape them? <laughs> rape is terrible. I hate it. Is rape, rape worse than saying the N word? Gregory. I tell you, rape is about about the same thing. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no! No! Rape is as bad as saying the N word? I think I hate crying. Oh. Bro, you this, are putting me in a Greg, whole mess. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, so rape is as bad as the N word? No. What's worse? Rape. So, so somebody saying the N word is not as bad as somebody getting raped. No. So you would say the N word before you would rape someone. Yes. Yeah. So you would say there, so there is a circumstance before you where you would say the N word. <laughs> To stop someone from being raped, I guess. You would say the N word to stop somebody from being oh, raped. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna rape her if you don't say the N word. Oh, what the fuck? I'm gonna hey, rape yo, her if you don't say the N word. Hey, yo, what the Ten, fuck? nine, Frank. eight, seven, Run. six. Run. Just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Frank then realizes that he's pressuring Greg too much, so they have a heart to heart. Frank gets tired of flirting with Trish, so he moves on to Taylor. He names their ship Tank and kisses the cigarette burn on her hand. She gets drunker and drunker as the night goes on, and kisses Frank on the mouth twice. Whoa! <laughs> Trish, are you gonna let that bald, frumpy lady steal your chud husband from you? Fight for your nice. love, fight like a dude. That was nice. The next morning, Tay insists that kissing Frank was strategical, and shits on her fan base by calling them fat fags. The house is slowly decorated for the finale, with it being given a swamp makeover. Trish is made into a voodoo priestess named Mama Juju, and Chris is painted green and called the Swamp Gin. The final challenge begins at 4.40pm, the Swamp Olympics. It starts with an opening ceremony, which gets interrupted by Sam's constant coughing and the chickens making noises in the background. <laughs> Judge introduces the concept of NPCs, freeloaders who the contestants could go to in between challenges to gain an advantage. Mama Juju can place a curse on another contestant by taking away points, while the Swamp Gen can perform certain tasks if they do the same for him. Each contest will earn the contestants points, with the highest amount winning the show. There will be no second place prize. Oh, and if you can't tell who is who, TJ is the one in blue, Tay in red, and Shinji in yellow. The first challenge is to perform a ritual dance. Other challenges include capturing the chickens to send them off, being hunted by various crew members and freeloaders, having to crawl upstairs in a sleeping bag, chewing gumballs, and taking an MDE quiz. Tay gets the most right on that quiz, but gets a point taken away, as knowing that much MDE knowledge is cringe according to the judge. Two new NPCs join the fray, that being Old Frank, who can mess with people, and the Psycho Killer, who can make fish lose challenges if he touches them. Fans are asked to shave their heads in support of their preferred contestant by midnight, for a point advantage. TJ ends up winning that one, and Tay takes a jab at her fans. Hey, wait, do you remember when I said all your fans were fat faggots? Yeah, I think uh, it's living up to that. Is uh, it living up to that? You should, okay, right now what you should do is like, I mean, oh, that's not true, okay. that's no, not true. No, they're not fat Discord faggots. Um, I said that How as a could joke. You say that? I said that as a joke, and I didn't have any <laughs> evidence to back that up <laughs> early in the <laughs> show. But now, I think the evidence is here. Here's some of you guys. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh this, man. This, guy, this is a TJ fan who said, fuck you. Yeah. And he shaved his head to take your points. This is your biggest Thanks, hater. dude. Do you want to show it to this? <laughs> Thanks, dude. Shout out my biggest hater right here. <laughs> <laughs> the psycho killer is revealed to be Brian, who laughed when someone called him a Jew. He gives updates on his current situation, saying he got 90 text messages from CK and didn't read a single one. He called her, ending their relationship. Chris sings his best rendition of Simple Man by Leonard Skinner. I'll help you on some bright sunny day And he sent me a simple kind of thing Cause it's the fish tank and you know it rocks Tay finds the worms TJ and Shinji were going to use on her, giving them to Chris. She instructs him not to use them until morning. When everyone is distracted, Tay steals TJ's chips. TJ gets pissed and tears apart the room looking for them. He confronts Shinji and realizes it was Tay who did it. The tension between these three becomes palpable, though Tay outright admits it, saying it's part of the game. You stole my chips. 
and you gotta do what you gotta do. It's part of the game. TJ then thinks about stealing Shinji's chips, but never goes through with it. He burns Tay's crochet bag, but she plays it cool and says she'll make another one. Chris backstabs her and gives the worms to TJ. More Swamp Olympic games commence, such as drunk dodgeball, more hunting, making Ben feel better, selling mystery boxes, baby oil cannonball, and bug zapper tag. One of the best challenges was Hassle Frank, which is just what it sounds like. Oh, sorry, TJ. Oh, oh, oh shit! <laughs> God damn! They going down? Frank, we're doing great. Oh, fuck. Other challenges at night include egg dodging, cutting checks, and paintball battle royale. Shinji ends up leaving that challenge due to an injury, so Judge joins in just for the hell of it. The fish are then made to eat various disgusting items, like frog legs and snails. Jet tells them to then make Greg cry, but none of them can go through with it. Jet gets oiled up and needs to be caught by the others. Baby. One of the final challenges has the three trying to see who can piss their pants first. None of them can do it, so Chris reclaims dominance by pissing on the floor. By now, the points total is Shinji at 13, TJ at 21, and Haley at 2. Hers is so low since the others dogpiled on her as expected. This leads to her elimination. You've gathered you fine gentlemen and lady here today to bid one of you farewell. It is farewell. It's just beginning. It's just beginning. In a way. But in another way, it's someone leaving the show, the competition. And we thank this person greatly for their immense contribution, their heart, their determination, their charisma and wit, and their love. TJ, it's not you. Okay, Taylor, come on over here. Taylor, you did great. You're an amazing young woman, and we love you. And you're a great young lady. Great, get out of my face with that. Get out of here. You're good. You're a good kid, Taylor. Thank you. You did really good. Okay. You did really good. You did real good. Thank you for thank you for making it this far. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Daily, you uh, consistently impressed me from the moment you got here. Uh, there's a reason why you have the highest IQ out of these people. It, it, it was very visible watching your performance uh, that you outsmarted people consistently. Unfortunately, I think you fell victim to the dog pile. And um, that's that's how nature works. But on our own, on your own accord, if this was a one v one, I think both TJ and Shinji would have had a very hard time keeping up with you. Unfortunately, there were three people competing at once, and the main reason why you're going home tonight is because how good you are and how much of a threat people consider you. Um, we all highly, highly respect you, <clears throat> and it's no surprise that your challenge earnings run laps around these guys before the final. You worked harder, you did fucking phenomenal, and everyone in the audience knows that's true. Round of applause for Taylor. Just before midnight, the final game commences, a good old-fashioned boxing match between TJ and Shinji. We were able to get a close-up of it with the Greg cam. 
I won't play the whole thing, but I'll play the most notable parts of the match. Hands up, TJ. Hands up, TJ. Hands up, TJ. Hands up, TJ. Ten seconds. Hands up, TJ. 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 TJ, push aggressive, push the advantage, go, 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 fucking kill him, go. God, speed to these two warriors like it's a Hajime no Ippo fight. Go, fight! Let's fucking go, boys, let's fucking go. Give it your all, TJ, and there's an Ashford for the warrior. I'm gonna do this as I do. Showing everything you have left. Shinji, take his body. Shinji, wait for the milk. Remember what's on the line, Shinji. You need to keep pushing, pressing, and you need to be all right, can you tuck back a little bit against the wall? Yeah, sorry. Thank you. TJ, nice reach. Hold those hands up. Endurance is key. <clears throat> Quitting, TJ. All you have to do is never give up. Now is your time. Should you finish the fight, kill this white honky gooner circumflex. Smash, 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 smash. Smash this shit, TJ. You got this. Circumflex autistic fight. Keep your tongue in your mouth. Alright. I see your tongue out again. I'll call that a knockdown. Tongue in your mouth. <laughs> Shinji, this is the last challenge. You need to aim for TJ's rib. TJ's rib is damaged to punch it and win the game. His rib. Shinji might have one print. What? Taylor and her boyfriend are cheering hard for TJ. Go Shinji. O B A M N A. More than one. Knock his fucking head off. Stop being tired. <laughs> Shinji, you're making the Yakuza right, proud. It is still a fight. This is fight. Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Keep tanking TJ. He's getting winded. Outlast and burn it all to ash. <laughs> You okay? Get your hands on top of your heads to breathe Can in you the put, grace. Stand up, put your hands up. You got this, man. Brotherhood. Can you put your hands up? Continue, yes or no? Huh? Continue. 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 All right. All right, you have to intelligently Fight. defend yourself. Fight. Up, all right? Sushi Toyota Sayonara Mitsubishi Hawaii. Come on, gentlemen! Go, 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 go! Last key to ask. 
Thank you for such a great job. Remember, she like the dragon. She's DJ, you can punch me now. You can punch me now. That would be a good time to punch him. Right. Come on, Shane, do not give up. You will need to keep punching him now until he drops to the ground. Punch him until he's on the floor. That's how it works. No! TJ, go! 500 on Shenji. Come on! Alright, count him. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Oh, that's it. The fight lasts for 20 minutes, with it ending on a heartfelt moment between the two. Uh, uh, you did amazing. I thought I was going to lose to you in the first few rounds. You did amazing. I always dream. I raise you like that. I expect it. This is a great ending. <laughs> Thank you for being here. You're amazing, man. Now I can say I can beat someone that wasn't a retard or a woman. Thank you. I love you, Shinji. <laughs> TJ is the winner of Fish Tank Season 2, earning the grand prize of $50,000. Jack congratulates the cast and crew for their contributions to the show, giving the audience a farewell. Thank you, viewers, very much. Jet, the director, is going to go through the cast here, and then we're going to let these two youngsters speak their piece. First and most important cast member, Chris Lynch, come on up here. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. We got Rich. We got Rich right here. Rich kept the whole thing together. Also, Wes. 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 Alex, dude, thank you for everything. I didn't do anything. No, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Thank you for being here. Vex is the reason why all these people look so cool and good clothes. She's the reason why they have food. Our stupid ideas were fueled by Bex. Check out her music. Thank you, Bex. Thanks. Round of applause. <laughs> Josie, talented, smart, determined. The winner of season one came back to bless us with her presence for season two. There were times when these people pissed me off. I want to just make you win again. Thank you. <laughs> Incredibly talented, beloved by all, the workhorse of Fish Tank. Extremely capable. Mr. Fish Tank. <laughs> and we call him Mr. Fish Tank. Mr. Fucking <laughs> Taylor in her normal non-70s clothes. You did great. Everyone respects the hell out of you. You should be very happy. Thank you for being a part of this. Taylor, round of applause. <laughs> Chris, are you coming back for season three? Oh, you already know it, Chris. <laughs> you already it's out. Uh -oh. <laughs> you the most. The psycho killer. I liked you the most. You got the killer. short straw. Brian, you got the short straw, but you, there's a reason you came back. You are our favorite. I love you, brother. Thank you for coming back and being a part of the end. Thank you, Brian. You're so, so good. Brian. Step forward, my friend. You brought the fucking chaos. You made the show great. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for entertaining Absolutely. everybody. Thank you for having me. Well 
Oliver, I'm sorry for running sleep experiments on you. You made it to the end, and you didn't have a reason to, as far as like, compared to TJ, compared to Shinji. You're a legendary freeloader. Thank you for fucking being here. Taking the risk to come across the fucking ocean, come out to this weird ass show. Oliver, thank you. Thank you. We like you too much, we could not let you go. In fact, when we're done here, you're gonna continue living here. Chris, you are, you're the princess, you're the best. Thank you for being a part of this. Um, I don't know if that part's true, we can talk about that. Her living here? I'm joking. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm joking. <laughs> it's a joke. Okay. We're keeping <laughs> Cowboy? Thank you. Cowboy. <laughs> Cowboy, you know me very well. We're both Geminis, okay? But I'm a Gemini who can't use tools or think in linear paths. Thank you for making this show run, filling in all my blind spots, and making the show better. Uh, everything that is impressive that you see, it's because of this mother right here. The, the, the walkway you're standing on. I'm, look, me and Ben have our talents, but we are not as smart as Max. Max, thank you for your hard work. I appreciate it. Our meat, our, uh, meat space logistics guy. Meat space this logistics. This is the guy that gets it done IRL. Thank you for being here, cowboy. Scott. Coach Sensei. Sensei. Sifu. Sifu Sensei. You've been uh, a part of Fish mm. Tank two seasons in a row. Mm. Your contributions are very valuable. Uh, people go stir crazy, and I think you genuinely helped everyone here. All, all jokes and bullshit aside, <coughs> uh, everyone liked to see your face almost as much as Chris, but if you brought alcohol and you boxed people, that would change. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Greg. We had very many serious discussions about just giving you the 50K, and and, and, uh, and that's not a joke. That was on the table. Yeah. Greg, we like you a lot. We were going to run a narrative poll. We were going to run a narrative poll Yeah. for 75% of people to give the 50K to Greg. <laughs> for real, we like you. I know this, this whole show, this whole place, is not your foray. It's not. It's it's strange that you're even here, and I know you know that. But just your personality. You're a very funny guy. The audience likes you more than the people who just won, and that's not a joke. They love Greg. I hope you continue making videos. Skitsy underscore va. Skitsy. Yeah. Greg. 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 There's one person we're forgetting. Vance, get up here. Vance. I'll take the camera. Vance. Vance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Vance, thank you. Just look at him. Need I say more? <laughs> oh, let me get up zoom. Yeah. Need I say more, folks? <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you hold this one? Yeah. Vance. Vance, um, I appreciate you and Josie so much. And when we were looking for people to help with season two, we knew the only people that could understand what this fucking shit is like is people who have been through it. Um, you came into a world of shit that was much different than season one, and you stayed strong and true. Before season one even ended, we knew we would be around you more. I'm very fucking happy to work with you. Thank you for all your hard work. You made this Thank season you. amazing. Thank you. We wouldn't have been able to get through this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, TJ, where's TJ's check? Which one did I crumple up with? Which destroyed check is DJ's? Is the other one in the chicken? Yeah. DJ, this is, now this is real. <laughs> wow. This is real. This actually is real, even though it's a prop. You won. <laughs> Face the camera, come here. You, you dominated this competition. You dominated the competition, man. I did. And you were, throughout this whole season, you were the most present, the most active, and um, you won. It's cool. You won with the boxing match at the end. Was that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. I did it. That was for zero points because you won at 10 p.m., but I didn't think you were going to win that one. I thought we were going to keep picking you up off the floor and keep giving you chances and then finally peel you off and drag you in here and tell you you won, but you won that shit. Thank you. See, talk to the camera. Um, I'd like to uh, thank everyone that's been in this house. 
uh, from all the fish, uh, Brian giving me the strength to be more vicious, uh, Bailey making me think on my feet, Trish being uh, a not just an absolute nice person to talk to, and Shinji being an absolute bro always. I want to thank the production. They're doing amazing work. From uh, Bex taking me from pink eye and my ribs, Max driving me here and teaching me how to like lift and stuff, Sensei for somehow training me how to box, Greg for being who he is, <laughs> everyone, Ben for anointing me the boss, <laughs> it was Chris for being my Michi for my for, for my boy from Michigan. Everyone, everyone is doing amazing, and I'm really thankful to them. Uh, and for keeping the house not flooded. Thank you to all the TJ's Maxers and just watchers who watched me in my journey. Despite, I mean, despite winning fifty thousand dollars and winning the show, I am more <laughs> enriched now. I am more confident. Uh, just uh, I don't know. Probably less people think I'm autistic now. I, I don't know. Just uh, everything just got better. So thank you so much. stellar performance. You pushed through, you stayed here, you made it all the way to the very end. And I think everybody watching this respects you. And I think you've <coughs> earned your fan base. And you've also earned this, the Golden Mascara, which was real, but nobody looks for it. <laughs> Change you say some stuff. Cut this. It's gonna be nice. You good? Got it. I'm good. I, I guess not. Yeah. You can see him? No, let's go to the, Let's get up. Congratulations. The wraps. Let's wrap. All right. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. <clears throat>With the season ending, many of the fish began streaming careers once they got home. Most notable is Shinji, who first dreamed of his buddy Crash, the friend who encouraged him to go on the show in the first place. Apparently Summer was watching the stream, and went nuts on Twitter once again. Uh, Summer seeing... So, uh, apparently, uh, I don't know if this is true, but there, Summer might be watching and is mad. How, yeah. Where is she watching? No, no hate to Summer. Um... Oh, and uh, don't worry about Shinji, we're, uh, he's not going to be a prostitute in America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. The a voicemail from Summer that she sent to Jet got leaked, where she calls multiple times. She tried accusing Sam and other members of the crew of sexual assault, and claims they sent her to a mental hospital Sam owned. Many found this all hypocritical, as during the Storytime Challenge, she talks about when her friends made false allegations about her. She's clearly not mentally there, and resorted to making false allegations for attention. 
Turkey Tom would cover this story on his second channel, resulting in her calling during a stream. I've been online since I was 10 years old. Like, there's no stopping this train. You don't think that's part of the problem? I feel like the internet made me worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made, it made all of us worse. We're, we're degenerates, all of us. Someone says, ask about detransitioning or lube cooch. What the f is this? Okay, I can talk about detransitioning if you want. <laughs> I don't Did know you detransition? Kind of, but I never took hormones. Okay. Uh, I identified as a trans boy when I was like 14 to 16. Uh, and people like found my old Twitter. That's why they're asking. Uh, there's not a lot I can say about it other than that I was wrong. And I fell into a group uh, made up of mostly other trans kids. And I think I was very easily influenced by them. And uh, I was also struggling with my sexuality. Like I'm bisexual and I'm also Christian. So I've always struggled with liking girls and hating myself because of it. And I think me identifying as trans was mostly coming from a place of, I can be straight if I'm a boy, <laughs> which yeah. is so not true. And I'm really glad that I never took hormones. I'm glad that I figured out I was wrong. When I told my friends that I wasn't actually trans, I did lose every single one of them because they had a certain agenda they wanted to push and I went against that agenda. But all in all, I think it was a good experience for me. Like, yeah, it's awkward to identify as a boy when you're clearly not. Like, mm -hmm. obviously it was an awkward time for me, but I think that I became stronger because of it. And I also gained a lot of knowledge about like, I guess trans stuff and kind of formed my own opinions now. Various fish and freeloaders would come onto Alex Stein's show, first being a mini reunion with Tay, Dunye, Jimmy, and Taylor. Taylor's mom was even brought on and asked about her opinion of Fish Tank. When I started watching it, I was glued. No! Yes, I was totally glued. Um, any would you watch the clips, <laughs> Linda, or would you watch the whole show just I live? I was watching it live. Okay, I would be in the store with headphones on. You know, oh, doing my business. And... Would you switch screens or, or would oh, yeah. you? Oh, so you just be oh, yeah. I was watching it on my TV, and then I was watching it, you know, on my phone where I could switch rooms. Yeah. You know, oh, and God. it was an emotional oh. roller coaster for me because you know, seeing what she was going through, and but um, but I will say, Donye was super annoying at first. <laughs> <laughs> but but Donye. <laughs> I do like you because you you made the show very entertaining. Yeah. I could hear his caca always all through the house, but you know, he was just he was there for Taylor. Yeah. And he supported her when everybody else was against her because she's such a competitor. She really is. And and I know Tay played softball. Is that why she's yes. such a competitor? She's an athlete. She yes. She knew when she was on the field she was a beast. Yeah. You know? And it's just that mindset she was in when it was, you know, time to compete. And people don't know what East Texas people are like. You know, they don't realize people from <laughs> East Texas are tough. Yeah, they are. There was also a mini reunion with TJ, Trisha, and Ty, which had a pretty funny but awkward moment at the end. Do I? Well, you hang up on me, right? <laughs> yeah, we hang up on you. See ya. All right, cool. All right, Bye, see you later. Bye. It's nice seeing you guys. Are you being honest with me, Alex? Yeah, I am being honest. They're supposed to hang up on you. I don't. I, how am I supposed to hang up on you? The people that work my show are idiots. Obviously, they're howling back there like hyenas. I'm trying to. Yeah, bye, TJ. I mean, how many times do I say, get the hell out of here, dude? Well, I'll see you later. See ya. Great catching up with you. As with you. I hope your mom uh, is doing well. He's doing pretty good. Finally, damn. Damn, wow, that was exhausting. That was terrible. Right. I mean, I love the guy, but gosh almighty, he wouldn't shut up. Couldn't get him to talk, and then when he finally talked, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Can you believe you lost to that guy? 10 chickens were rescued from a home in Cumberland today. West Place Animal Sanctuary in Tiverton says it received a complaint on Thursday 
An online reality show called Fish Tank released the chickens in the house and allegedly intended on abusing them for content. Now, they were reportedly purchased from somewhere on Federal Hill. Once the show's producers didn't think it was funny anymore, they ordered the birds to be returned. We're told one producer called the animal sanctuary instead. All 10 birds were rescued, but now West Place needs help finding them good homes. To learn more, you can visit www.westplace.org. While the finale was going on, a news report by WJAR accused the show of abusing the chickens. If you actually watched Fish Tank, you'll know that wasn't true. The comments dunked on them for this, saying, Love that they made sure to tell the animal rescue folks the bit didn't end up being funny. Never forget the USS Liberty and the roosters and hens that died that day. They're chickens, bro. Nobody cares. And, You think that's bad? Just wait until you hear what happened to me. Oh wait, is that Summer? Seemingly both John and Vance replied to this. Though this comment by Beefer sums the controversy up best. They weren't rescued. The producers of the show themselves contacted the shelter to move the chickens. It's a dark comedy reality show. The thing about abandoning the chickens was most likely jokes. They were really good with the chickens, and made sure they suffered no harm while on the show, and they were saved from a slaughterhouse to put them on the show. The director of the show loves animals. In the last season of the show, he brought a goat and clearly loved it and was very gentle with it. They weren't planning to abuse the chickens at all. They have never done anything bad of animals. This article is just straight up bad. The quote-unquote abuse was the TTS trolling them and Greg accidentally spilling a couple of drops of cranberry juice on them. That's all. Chickens, this is mine, Goblin. Remember that love you. You guys are doing a great job. Chicken it up. Translation. Buck, 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 buck. They were all warm, given food, and even coddled and pet. But hey, these scummy news organizations gotta make money somehow. In my humble opinion, I think Season 2 is much better than Season 1. If you take your rose-tinted glasses off, Season 1 had less going on in comparison. I mean, by Day 5 in Season 2, you had a mentally ill girl puking everywhere and being forced to leave, another leaving after an intense gator squat contest, and two of the contestants hooking up in the bathroom. I still like Season 1 a lot, but Season 2 was just more insane and more entertaining. That's why this video is so much longer than the first. There was just more going on. Many did have a problem with so many people leaving in the first 10 days, but I feel like the freeloaders really made up for that. You had last season's four best freeloaders returning, along with great new additions like Dunye, Oliver, and especially Greg. Greg's career was revitalized because of the show. He can now branch out instead of just being known as a fake Mr. Beast guy. I'm extremely hyped for the future of Fish Tank, and hope the edited versions of Season 2 reflect Season 2's overall quality. Well, if Jet can get off his Cheeto-encrusted ass and stop playing Skyrim. I want to thank you guys for the recent support and expect a really long horror list and a short lost media video by the end of the month. See ya. Yeah, hey, this one's for all my keyboard warriors. Let's get it. Hey to be mad, I don't really know why. why? They'll be on the keyboard, I'll be outside. Side. Staring at the screen, I'll be staring at the sky. Out of this tank, I'm ready to fly. Straight to the top is where I'm headed. Uh -huh. Bird get a worm, show me where the bread is. Show Getting me. fish bucks, I don't do no credit. Getting fish bucks, I don't do no credit. Better have my cash up front. Up front. Pull up and I'm finna stunt. Somebody pass me the blunt. Pass it. Come on, bitch. Don't be a cunt. I'm getting money, uh huh. You are hating on me, uh huh. I'm getting money, uh huh. You are hating on me, uh huh. I'm getting money, uh huh. You are hating on me, uh huh. I'm getting money, uh huh. You are hating on me. Greg, we love you. Give us a thumbs up if you hate the blacks and Jews. <laughs>